Hey guys, welcome to the show. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Great to be here. Night before New Year's Eve. I can't believe it is going to be 2015. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Spencer Coburn. This is the Ball Show. You're listening to and watching the Ball Truth. Uh, this is self-help radio for guys and unfortunately for girls who get it. If you are new to the broadcast, don't know who I am, why I'm here. Um, like I said, it's the hair loss show. I'm a consumer advocate for men and women dealing with hair loss. I'm the author of The Ball Truth and The Truth About Women's Hair Loss. And I also happen to be the founder of the American Hair Loss Association. And what we do here each and every week, and what we've been doing for the past 17 years, which is unbelievable, is uh, really try to, you know, provide a a platform for men and women who are dealing with hair loss to talk about an issue that society just does not allow us to talk about. An issue that, you know, affects just about every household in the world. But we can't talk about it. To this day, it's almost 2015. People are still weirded out by it. Even today, in my day-to-day -day dealings, someone happened to ask me what I did for a living. And when I try to explain it to them, they look at me like I, I'm completely out of my mind. Like, how is it possible? i turn this music off. How is it possible to do a radio program, an internet broadcast on hair loss every week for 17 years? And I got to tell you, I'm tired of trying to explain it to them. But you know what's funny? This guy was balding. And after I start to talk a little bit about what I'm doing, and I try not to get too into it, then the questions start. That's the way that it is. I always end up holding court. So I know, no matter how crazy people think that, you know, what I do is, or this show is, or the entire, you know, thing that we built here. I couldn't think of the word. And that's not Propecia brain fog. It's just old age. Um, when I think about it, it's, it's amazing. And the fact that it's 2015, it's going to be 2015, and we are going stronger than ever. The show is bigger than it's ever been. Uh, it just shows me that you know, no matter how far we've come, there's still such a need for this information. There's still so many people out there who are really suffering with this silent epidemic. And I have to say, you know, for anyone who goes to the Internet and, you know, sees some, you know, sees all the crap that's out there in this $3.5 billion a year industry. And is considering buying some ebook that some guy wrote in his basement or some product or service they heard advertised on the radio, and then they go to their website. I wouldn't be here if these products and services and these books that, uh, you know, these guys who've uh, figured out the cure for hair loss in their parents' basement, I would not be here if these products and services and these treatments really worked. There are still only two FDA-approved treatments. I can't believe it. My, my wife is running the dryer in the other room, and it's connected to the wall here. You guys probably can't hear it, but it drive me crazy. Um, still only, only two FDA-approved treatments known to really work for hair loss. There are a couple of things coming down the pike. You know, if you look on the message forum, like, you know, go to balltruthtalk.com, people are kind of, like, summarizing what's happening in the world of hair loss treatments. And, you know, what happened in 2014 and what to look forward to in 2015. And I got to tell you, uh, even with all the advancements, and there have been, you know, a lot of advances, we are still, we still have to deal with reality. And the reality is there are two FDA-approved products that work. One FDA-approved product that's prescribed off-label. There is now platelet-rich plasma therapy in certain hands seems to be working. Um and I think the biggest change for 2015, and you guys can quote me on this, is, is going to be the evolution of robotic hair transplantation. That is going to be 
one of the biggest changes for the coming year. So I think it's important, I really want to focus on this this year, that we have to live in reality. I don't mind talking about future treatments. I think it's important. You guys can call in and talk about whatever you want. I will give you as much information as I have. But we have to live in reality. And the reality is we have a handful of treatments. You can do something about your hair loss if you really want to. If you're cool with it, if you're equipped to deal with it, then shave your head. I honestly think that's probably your best bet anyway. I just was not equipped to deal with it. That's why I'm sitting here in this chair with a, a, a half a can of hairspray and my the back of my head painted. That's why I probably drink so much beer and everything else. I just wasn't equipped to deal with it. But I like to try to stay in reality. And the reality is not as bad as a lot of people are making it out to be online. Phone number is 888-659-3727. Now, Andrew Zarian was going to uh, call in today uh, to tell us about his three-week Propecia update, but he's not, says he's feeling a little under the weather. Don't think it's Propecia related, but I think he's in the chat room. So you can probably ask him some questions about it there. Apparently, he's doing very well. And uh, maybe we'll have him on for his one-month update. Let me give out the phone number, 888-659-3727. Again, if you're new to the broadcast, this is your safe place. If you want to call me to ask me any questions about anything related to hair loss, this is your chance. If you're considering surgery or if you're booked for surgery after the new year, you want to see if you made the right decision, this is your chance. If you're about to pull the plug on a product or a service and spend a whole bunch of money on something that's not FDA approved or maybe, you know, have an FDA approved product in it, but you saw advertised on television or in the back of a magazine or on the internet or on, on the radio, call me. I'll tell you the truth about it. We sell nothing on this broadcast, nothing. You know, I'm the founder of the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. And while all of our members pay an annual screening fee, I think surgery is your last resort. I will not sell surgery on this show. Talk about Propecia, my experience with Finasteride, and the experience of those who may have had success and even those who, who haven't done so well. Those are my experiences. I have no connection to Merck. Everything you're going to hear on this broadcast is the truth. So love it or hate it, this is what we have. And we're here to provide you with as much information about this subject as possible. And I think even more importantly, to help guide you through the emotional issues that we as a, that we as a society really are just, we can't talk about. This is the place to do it. 888 all right, man. Is that you? <laughs> yeah, it's me. Okay. It's me. So what's going on? Can you hear me this, now? This sounds, this sounds, yeah, this sounds much better. Okay. So what is it? Like the can the string you're using now? What's going on? You think? I mean, it's, it's, you know, this building I moved into, it's, it's, it's like it's um, built inside of a, a Faraday cage where no signals get in or out. And... Um, I was, I was literally, I, I'm seriously, I was in the spot where normally the signal is just fine. And then Andrew calls in and says that it's fine on his end. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is BS. So I'm actually calling you on Skype since I got such a great Wi-Fi signal. So things will be a lot better. That's interesting. And you know what? We could actually, uh, I could probably hook you up through Skype uh, when I take a break on my other Skype line. And you can get a really clear signal. So we'll, we'll do that after the break and see what happens. Because right now you're calling me through a phone, through Skype. We could actually probably get you, and it'll, it'll sound broadcast quality. Right on. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So, so do you remember um, what you were talking about? Not really. But, um, okay. So, <laughs> oh, the, uh, yeah, the, that, uh, that billboard I saw. And, um, and how uh, and we segued into, into the marketing um, behind Neograph and how I, I realized when I first saw that ad game over that um you know and, and i heard what you're saying after I was, I was cut off that you know why wouldn't someone want the most cutting edge and modern procedure out there i mean the lay person will look at it and say well hell yeah that makes a lot of sense of course and um 
unfortunately, you know, of course, with uh, with many things, of course, in this industry, um, you know, most people don't do their research the, the way that they should and, and understand the dynamics of, of what they're dealing with. Now, I also heard you mention that some doctors are using um, Neograft um, after they've modified it to, in such a way where it's not um, – as spec from the factory, as you could say. Like Dr. Bauman, he's uh, disabled the, 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 the suction portion of it, and he's using it. There's only two guys in the country that I know who are doing that. There's a guy in Houston uh, named Dr. Rashid Rashid, and there's Alan Bauman. Alan Bauman is the, the first doctor in the OB world, the first doctor in the OB world, and there's Alan Bauman. Alan Bauman is the, the first, the OG guy, the guy that really first jerry-rigged uh, the neograft, yeah. you know, not using it the way it's meant to be used out of the box, and basically just using it as a hand tool. As a as as as, yeah. as a as, as a almost like a hand drill, and that's what they are in essence. That's what it is. It's a it's a punch. Yeah, it's well, a handheld, you know, uh, mechanical punch. Yeah, and, and kudos to Dr. Bauman for for um, thinking outside the box in that because you know, like you said, only two doctors have modified it. Well, that, that says that the rest of them are. Just using it out of the box as it comes, and well, two two, uh, two that I'm two that I'm aware of the ma- have experience no better. Yeah, two that I'm aware of. The majority of guys who are use, use, utilizing neograft are using the suction. Now, for those who don't understand why suction would be bad, you know, um, basically, if you have air that's surrounding a graft and sucking a graft through a tube, there's something called desiccation or drying out of the follicular unit. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that every graft is going to be so desiccated that it's not going to be viable, but there's a greater chance that the graft isn't going to be as robust or even grow at all, uh, just based on the fact that it's, you know, it's being sucked through this chamber and this long tube. Um, I would say that, you know, to be fair, I would say most of the grafts are probably viable, but there's a chance of damage. And so why even subject the grafts to that possibility when you have a finite amount of hair that could be moved? And, that, and that's why I look at it. It's like, you know, they're, they're probably fine. Um, you know, it's more of a user uh, skill type of deal uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if there's going to be any sort of uh, damage. But the thing is, is that um, why, why add another layer of, of complexity? Why, why add another layer of potential uh, damage when you don't have to? I, I agree. For the sake of convenience, right? I agree 100%. And that's, and that, that, that's the thing. It's... It seems like, you know, okay, we, we say, uh, you know, for the sake of convenience, but when novices, you know, get their hands on this, this is the way the machine works. They don't know any differently. They're not educated to the fact that yeah. this is a possibility. Most of the guys that get their hands on this device are not hair transplant surgeons. They don't have the experience. And they're kind of sold this turnkey procedure, and it makes sense. Listen, if I was a dermatologist, if I was a, uh, you know, uh, you know, an internist, or if I, you know, want to get into cosmetic surgery or into hair, this seems like, hey, wait a second, I have this team of technicians that come to come come to my door. All I have to do is basically book the cases, and I kind of learn on the job. You know, they're not asking what the specifics and the mechanics of the machine is, and you know how the, you know, uh, if the you know the machine could possibly damage the graft. It doesn't even enter their minds. So you, you can't really blame them. No, not not at all. I mean, it's um, it, it's an easy way into the industry, and um, it, it pays for itself in, in no time since it's, you know, as far as medical uh, equipment goes, it's, it's relatively cheap, and um, yeah, I mean, it's low overhead for um, for some pretty pretty fast track returns, which makes sense to anyone actually if you're if you're in business. It's just they don't look into the um, uh, the, the the real story behind it and what the alternatives are and the, and the benefits of actually doing something by hand or or investing in something that's a bit, a bit more evolved um, and is continuously evolving, such as the artist, right? Um, it, was, it would be interesting to see who evolves in that direction if some of these guys who were the real pioneers in the industry, you know, the John Coles or the Alan, Alan Baumans or the guys that really started to do FUE early on, See if they kind of gravitate in that direction. That's gonna. I think that's gonna be very yeah. telling. Well, I, I think it's already happening because um, <clears throat> someone on um, on the forum, BallTruthTalk dot com, um, <laughs> posed a. Um, my, my voice is a little raspy, so I can't do my radio voice. But uh, posed a, a question directly to Doctor Cole, asking him what he thought of the artists. 
Right. And um, of course, I clicked on that because I, I know I know what his traditional answer has been. But um, I, I always like to watch a, l- a little drama unfold whenever he he posts something. But uh, um, I, I haven't read, I haven't read the forum um, this week. So tell me, what does it say? I, well, I got to tell you, I tried to avoid the forum. Good. I was on a holiday, but Good. you know, during during the holidays, it, the inevitable um, boredom sets in because there's really nothing to do at, at times, and so you, you go back to the forum. So, anyway, um, so uh, Dr. Cole's um, assistant comes on, and, sit, and um, yeah, the, the question was: uh, I think in the past you were not so keen about the use of artists during FUE. Lately, I've seen some of the best-known hair transplant surgeons purchasing the artist. It seems like a machine will be more consistent than the human during the extraction process and never make any errors due to fatigue, bad eyesight, shaky hand, etc. Do you think the human extraction is still better, and have you considered getting artists to compare with human extraction? Um, Dr. Bernstein seems to think that artists will soon be used for graft placement too. What do you think? And, sorry. Um, is that your, you, did yeah, your porn so, just go on? No, it was actually the ads on GFQ that pop up in the middle of the broadcast. You know, God damn those guys are trying to make money. God damn those guys are trying to make money, but <laughs> what killed me is I had it on mute. I actually muted it so that the sound wouldn't uh, come in, and it override, overrode my mute. Uh, you know what you need? You, you need a, do you, not. You, 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 uh, don't, don't tell Andrew I'm telling you this, but you need to get an ad blocker. <laughs> I didn't hear. I didn't hear. Sorry, you're breaking up. Excuse me. What? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So um, the response was um, from Dr. Cole's assistant. He says Dr. Cole could best answer your question, of course. Well, yeah. Um, all I can say is Dr. Cole's opinion of the artist is more favorable than it was last year. The artist technology continues to improve, and this is interesting to me because. What have you and I been talking about for the past? Well, I, don't I can, know how many weeks? I can tell you. Months? I can tell you why. And this is nothing against Dr. Cole. I'm glad Dr. Cole listens to the broadcast because I would I would certainly say since I started to talk about the artists in the last few months, and since you and I have been talking about, it, and since I've been saying that I really believe that this is going to be, uh, you know, a huge part of the evolution of this field, I can't even tell you how many doctors have contacted me. And I can't even tell you how many guys in the IHRS have go- are going in that direction. And I'm not talking to them on the phone about it. A couple of guys I did. But, you know, I'm hearing people talking about the show. There was a meeting in Italy. Apparently, people were talking about what I was saying on the program. Uh, I kind of got that mm-hmm. through the grapevine. So there is no doubt that what we're speaking about here on The Bald Truth is getting out to the physicians, and they're you know they have their their antennas up, and they're taking a closer look, and I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, and you know when they're taking a closer look, they can see, like I did, uh, and and like you did, that apparently these guys are serious. They they really want to improve this, and and they're they're throwing a lot um, a lot at this uh, at the development to to really make sure it's. Um, it's top of the game, and, and I like that. And and kudos to Dr. Cole. I mean, it's, it's not his official response, but kudos to him for recognizing and acknowledging if, if that's what he winds up doing. How how this is uh, how this is evolving. And like you said, 2015, there's going to be a lot of changes. And um, artists and who knows what else is coming out. I mean, you know, artists has made a huge impact. Um, but like with any industry, especially when it comes to some sort of manufacturing process where a robot or, or some sort of device is, is made for whatever purpose, you're going to have your copycats that want to get on the game, too. Well, so, and that's the thing. You know, you unfortunately, the sometimes, sometimes the pioneers take the biggest hits. And now, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, they're going to be able to kind of, you know, they're infiltrating the industry right now. And, and what I like about the company is that they're willing to evolve. And I want to make it clear. It's important that people know this. At this point, I have not gotten a dime from artists or restoration robotics. Now, I'm not saying that at some point, you know, if, if, if since I like since I like the product, that's not that that won't be the case. But as of now, that is not the case. And I have been talking about them, um, actually, to a lot of criticism, you know, getting a lot of criticism about it for you know for the last six months. 
but I'm seeing what's happening. You know, they're contacting me and they're like, hey, Spence, you know, we heard you talking about this, that, and the other thing on the show, or they, they read the forum and they want to know the engineer contacts I me. Mean, they kind of want to know what my thoughts are about how to evolve this in a better direction. Yeah. And they've listened to every idea. I've never dealt with a company like that. These companies don't give a shit. You know what they want to do? They want to pay me these, you know, I'm not going to say which companies, but companies come to me, they want to pay me a half a million dollars or a million dollars a year just to put my stamp of approval on it and to talk about them on the show and to get my doctors and everyone else to use their devices or their laser, you know, devices or whatever. Um, not one has ever said, hey, you know, what do you think about, you know, doing it this way? And how do you think we can make this better for consumers? Never happened. And that's what was exciting about these guys. It blows guys. me away. Yeah. It blows me away. Well, you know what? They're smart. They're not idiots. They kind of see the direction. They want They want to build a better mousetrap. You know, the technology is there to do it, so why not do it? You know, when w they saw that I would, not, I, I would not speak about them favorably in 2011, 2012. I was very honest about them on the air. They were not ready for prime time. They knew how I felt about it, you know? And apparently yeah. that impacted them. And I appreciate the fact that they kind of understand that, you know, I have my thumb on what the consumers are looking for. I understand, and I, I speak to the doctors all, all the time. And while the technology is awesome, if you're putting something, you know, if you're comparing, you know, a robotic technology that was, that was creating larger holes and meaning larger scars in the back of a person's scalp, as opposed to someone doing it by hand or using a smaller motorized device, then you're not going to win. There's no way that I could recommend it, and there's no way that a lot of you know the the, the really great doctors in the field are going to use it. So you got to get better, and and they're doing that, and they're getting even better. So we'll see. You know, who knows? Like you said, there could be some you know some company in China right now that that has a better mousetrap that's going to come out in a couple of months, and all of a sudden we'll be talking about them. And yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Um, but uh, you know, while you're while you're talking, I, I just had a thought, and it, it's I think it's amazing how in, in today's day and age, you know, we, we talk about how um, in 2014 the, the hair transplant industry is um, in, in such a dark age um, situation compared to the rest of medicine. But when you think about it. And I think this is fantastic. You've actually got um, a, a, a shift away from uh, talking about such bad, horrible procedures that, that are being performed to today, you know, like the plugs and the really horrible strips and, and, and what have you, to now it's the, I think that the field overall has, has really started to improve because um, you, you've got pe more people moving towards FUE, but I think that, you know, when you look at the forums, especially, you see a lot less of the the really horrible, disfiguring um, horror stories than than you used to say five years ago. Oh shit! It's it's completely it's changed. Years. You still see some really bad work, but you know, it's yeah. it's it's relative. Yeah. It's relative. The bad work today is relative compared to what it was just five years ago, or eight, I'd say seven years yeah. ago. You know, when we started in this thing, when I started in this thing, it was really the Wild West. These young guys have no idea. These guys that are taking a stand online and saying that, you know, I remember just even two years ago, you know, about the, talking about the strip butchers and all that stuff. They have no idea what it was like. No clue. No clue. And it no is, it, it, the environment has completely shifted. This is what, what I want to do, Joe. I'm going to take a call. Um, I'm going to, after I take this call, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to see if you could hook up on my second Skype line, which I hooked up, and see if you, since you're using Skype, and see if I can get a clearer connection with you. Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so I'm going to, so let's hang up. I'm going to take this call. Okay. Um, you listen. I will text you the information, uh, and then you, you, if you could send me a friend request, I actually did, did text that to you. Okay. Uh, and we'll see if we could hook that up after the break, all right? Okay, sounds good. All right, dude, thanks. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Hey man, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Hey, it's Tim from Boston. Hey Tim, man, always always great to hear from you. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm not bad. I'm not bad. What's happening? Uh, I just had a, I had a few questions for you. Um, I was talking to my my father about hair transplants recently, and um, 
one of the questions I had was, you know, a lot of guys who, since a lot of guys are on Finast right now, when they come in, you know, six or seven years down the line after using finasteride and they come in for a hair transplant or at least for a consultation, I mean, how, what, at what point do you make a decision about how many grafts you should do and versus, you know, how much hair you're going to lose? And I know you said that you, you know, one of the reasons why you haven't gone in for a transplant is just because you fear of, you know, losing more hair. And then, you know, what if you can't cover the areas you want to cover? So it's, well, that's exactly that's that's the that's the exact reason. I have been fortunate enough to shave enough hair to dummy it up, and right. you know, worst case scenario, and I've spoken about this. I have worn like you know small partial hair systems and you know, whatever it takes. Like if I if I if I know that I'm going to be like on camera, on television, oh. not not the camera that I'm on. Uh, there have been times when I just didn't think the paint was enough, so I'd put something oh. back there. I have no problem talking about that and no problem, you know, this is this is my reality. But for me to go in, even though I am a great candidate for surgery, and to risk uh -huh. the possibility of shock loss and also to utilize those grafts in what I wouldn't think would be the most cosmetically important area of my head, instead of saving uh -huh. them for the front in case I need, I, I need to reinforce my hairline someday, it would be a waste. You know, I understand but, the I mean, reality of it. But you feel like since you've been on the drug, the, the progression has mostly been at the front of the, the hairline, and therefore you feel like if you go and you do the back, then it could continue to progress in the front? Is that what you're saying? Or? No, what I'm, what I'm saying is currently I have enough in the front and in the mid-anterior scalp where I feel mm -hmm. relatively comfortable. I can make it, I can dummy it up mm -hmm. and make it look pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. If I decide to u utilize the graphs uh, my mm -hmm. finite donor area in my crown, and then all of a sudden I start to really recede or start to really thin in the mid anterior scalp or in the hairline, I'm not going to have as many grafts to, to use in that area. So I'll never get the right. full density that I could have gotten. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of saving that as a reserve just in case I ever need it. It's kind of like, to me, it's money in the bank. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you gotta. You, sometimes you have to avoid spending that money on, you know, on a really nice car, whatever it is, early on, and kind of, you know, save it for a rainy day. Right. And that's the thing too is I feel like a lot of these. You know, I guess you got. You really got to jump on the medication if you can. If you can handle it, because man, if you, I don't know how. The, I don't know how these guys. You know, they they get a transplant and then they don't get on the medication. Like to me, that's. Well, I that's think I. I think it's risk. it's a massive risk, and I actually, you know, that's just the way I used to. That's the way it used to be in the old days before finasteride, and and frankly, back then, you know, hair, hair transplantation really sucked, uh, for the most part. I think it's a huge risk. I, 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 my advice would be to always speak to a doctor and, and let them explain that risk because hair loss. If you're at a point where you're getting hair transplant, your hair loss has progressed in most cases pretty significantly. It usually doesn't stop. Yeah. So you're going to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a hair transplant. You may feel comfortable for a year or two years, and then all of a sudden you're going to start to get that that feeling of depression again and that anxiety that you, you know, that it, basically you're just kind of putting it on hold. Uh, yeah. It's 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 a big risk, man. You're right about that, and I think that's a really good point. Cool. Now let me ask you: Does your father do hair transplants? No, uh, no. Um, it's he's not really interested. In, I guess he could, you know, if he wanted, he. Any, could, any doctor, uh, any doctor could. Any doctor could. I mean, facial plastic surgeons do it. You know, mostly they're you know facial lot, pla mostly facial urologists do it. ER doctors yeah. do it. You know, <laughs> do, uh, you know, uh, I, there are dentists out there who are doing hair transplants. I'm not joking. Yeah, I think you know. I think my father actually, um, when he he did a fellowship once and um, did one on somebody, um, but wasn't interested in doing it. You know, as part of his practice. Um, although mo most of his practice is cosmetic. Um, well, if your dad ever wants to get into it, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him how to train and where to go and he'll make a fortune <laughs> if he's good, if he's good. I know. Yeah. But, uh, we do know, you know, people in the area, like for example, my father, uh, I actually live in the Boston area, but my father, uh, he used to travel to, uh, Western Connecticut once a week. Yeah. Um, uh, where a uh, physician's assistant had a, an office out there, and he was the, the prescribing physician on the on the uh, in the practice. But um, Scott Bowden is pretty close to there. Uh, sure, I know Scott and, very well. 
Yeah, and he used to be an ER doctor. I actually had a consultation with him. And he told me he used to be an ER doctor. So. Yeah, and Scott's so, a so, conservative okay. guy. He's really good, nice guy. And I can tell you that he probably, yeah. you know, I, I forgot your, your I, know, I think he told me about your consultation, but he definitely was a, probably a straight shooter. Yeah, he was really good. I actually had one before that where I felt like the guy was not a very well-known guy, um, but I just didn't feel like he was, yeah, this guy, Scott Bowden is, and, and you can just see the work he does is really is really good. I don't know if he's his artist, though, which is sort of interesting. He's, I, I don't he, even, he's, he's actually, robot, he, he, yeah, it's a robot. He's actually, um, well, I'm, I'm not going to say what he's considering because I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but most of the guys that are really at the top of their game are not, now starting to consider going in that direction to at least do the heavy lifting. Um, there are some guys who are resistant, but it's it's really because yeah. you know now artists has really gotten the smaller punch down. Uh, but there are limitations with the artists. I this is what I think, and I think it's really important that people know this. I really think that the artist is going to work best in the hands and in the practice of a skilled practitioner and someone who has a really good staff, because mm -hmm. it's one thing. It's great. Let the artist do the heavy lifting. Let the artist do a lot, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the procedure. But people still have to understand the nuances of hair transplantation, and they also have to know how to go in there and cherry pick uh, grass by hand because there's certain areas of the scalp that the artist just at this point can't get to. All right. Well, thanks for the points. Yeah, I guess I was just sort of curious about those things. Yeah, but what you you but actually just... st you started off talking about the how do you know the number of grafts to have? I wasn't really sure of the question. Oh, well, I was just, yeah, I mean, I guess my thing is, is like, you know, if, if you're like, for example, uh, in, I'm 26 now, and in a half a year, I'll be 27, 27. Um, but, you know, I probably wouldn't even, con if I were to even do it, you know, I probably, I'd probably shave my head. But if, if I were to consider doing it, I probably would wait until my, you know, you know, early, thir mid thirties, maybe, you know? Yeah, um, and that's smart. But, a, but at that Because point, by, by the like, earlier mid thirties, you may not even want it. Your, t right, your life exactly. can be completely different. But I guess the uh, the concern I would have is how many graphs do you get now? You know, it's like I, I would almost want to do, you know, maybe, you know, I wouldn't want to go in and do this super procedure, I feel like, because I don't know how what the result is going to be, you know? so Well, here's, the, here's the good thing about FUE, you know, as opposed to strip. And again, I still think strip has its place. You know, at least you can go in there and you can have 500 grafts placed to see if you are a good healer, to see if you like the, you right. know, the procedure itself. And you're really not going to come away. Yeah, you're going to be moving 500 grafts, but you're not going to come away with any noticeable damage. You'll always be able to shave your head in that case, uh, as long as the punch right. is small enough. And you'll kind of be able to kind right. of move, you know, uh, kind of step away from it if things aren't to your liking. So that's really, right. uh, I think that's an important factor for young guys who aren't 100 percent sure. You could even start with a you could even start with it with a you know a test procedure. While the doctor's going to charge you more, you can say you know what I like to try two hundred grafts. You know, put it in a uh, in an inconspicuous place, maybe in the mid interior scalp. I just kind of want to see how I heal and how the hairs grow, and that's an option with FUE as opposed to you know getting a strip of scalp right. removed. Um, but right. you don't sound you know it, this. It's not a decision you can make. You don't have a crystal ball. You don't know how bald you're going to be when you're thirty three years old. So it's yeah. really difficult for you to make a decision on how many grafts you're going to need. Um, I would yeah, say yeah. if you're cool with shaving your head now, and I think if I remember, I think that you're okay with it, even though you're on Propecia. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, correct me I'm if I'm wrong. Probably only like a Norwood, I'm probably only like a Norwood 2 maybe. But, yeah, but Honestly, yeah, you sound like a really together guy, and like the fact that you shave your head, I would probably not even consider having a transplant. Consider it, yeah. you, we, that, yeah. that means you're all in, dude. No matter what kind of yeah. transplant you have, you're all in. And if you you're could sh in. if you could shave your head, that's that's the best route. Best route. Yeah, I guess the other thing too is like it, the other thing too is I really don't know where I'm where I'm going to end up because uh, you know I was looking at my so my my father has you know like a, like you know he has a goal with Europe you know what I mean yeah and my brothers are my grandfather's on both sides and my brother's, you know, it's, they don't have anything. Right. So all I have to look at here is my maternal uncles. Right. But then I look at my cousin, my first cousin, uh, Matthew, who's on my father's side, you know, his father is bald. Who's not related to me, but his uncle is my father. 
if that makes sense. It does make sense. And um, and so, and his maternal grandfather is my paternal grandfather, who was not bald. And my, there's actually no baldness in my father's family. None. None of them. My Uncle Jimmy, who was 90, had the hair of a 12-year-old. <laughs> that's, um, that's, that sucks and, and for Matt, you. Yeah, and Matt's, Matt's thinning. You know, he's in his 40s. He's a lot older than me. Yeah. But he's, he's, he's significantly thin. Not, not even in a classic male pattern way, sort of diffusely throughout the top of his head. Yeah. But, you know, but, you know in, in a pattern. It's in a pattern. Sure. But, I mean, what's interesting is that, you know, it, it, so it's clearly, you know, here's somebody who has the exact opposite situation of me. My, my cousin is in the exact opposite situation where his, his mother's side, it doesn't have it at all. And his father's side is very bald. And my side, the, the mother's side is very bald, and the father's side isn't at all. And so it's interesting to see that, you know, it's clearly polygenic. Yeah, well, and you're right about it, obviously. And that this is what you do. You, you're, you're, in, you're in the sciences now, right? That's what you're studying. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, one, the one thing they say is that they, they know that there's something on the, the X chromosome that seems to be highly correlated with it. But some people draw this gene, and they never have any hair loss. Right. So, so how, it's like the, what they call the androgen receptor. So basically what they're saying is men who have this gene who are what they, they don't even know for sure, but they're pretty sure that their follicles are, well, they know that the, the cause of male pattern baldness is that the follicles are more sensitive. But they're pinpointing it on this specific gene, which is on the X chromosome. Right. But some guys draw this gene, and they never lose their hair. Yeah. So. That's amazing. I mean, it's probably yeah. the it's probably the gene I have, but there has to be other genes at, at play that are interacting uh, sort of uh, synergistically with this gene. That well, are, and, that, and, and, that, and, that's, and that's the whole thing, and that's why, you know, uh, people like Angela Cristiano and, and, and other people, who are, other scientists who are researching this, they know that, yeah, obviously DHT, D, you know, it plays a, a major yeah. role in male pattern baldness. But why is it that, you know, even if you suppress DHT levels in, in men who, uh, in some men, you know, it just, it, it doesn't stop the progression. It doesn't really right. reverse the miniaturization process because there's other factors involved that are all working right. synergistically. So, yeah, you, you're right. Listen, we're fucked. That's just, you know, that's, that's yeah. what it is. But we're lucky in the sense that, you know, we, there is something to help us today. Right. You're having, um, you're having right. a good experience on finasteride and a lot of guys do. Right. Well, I think the thing is that some guys, some guys don't have a good experience on finasteride. And, and uh, I think, I mean, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure I'm not in genomics or genetics, but my understanding would be that, you know, some guys lose their hair and it's, it's unrelated to, you know, there's other factors that play other than DHT. And, and, and those individuals um, who don't really respond to the finasteride are, are probably in that category. Are in that category of people who it's it's are more susceptible to something other than DHT. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. What it is? I agree. They man. don't even know what it is. So. Well, listen, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna take some more calls. It's always a pleasure to hear yeah, hear from you, man. And uh, I'm yeah. glad I'm glad you're still doing well. And you know, listen, honestly, in your case, and you're gonna decide when you decide. You can decide what you decide when it's time for you. But yeah. it sounds like yeah. you, you're you got your stuff together enough not to even worry about having cosmetic surgery. And you could, yeah, yeah. you could probably, wait it out. you could, you should definitely wait it out. And I have a feeling you're just going to be able to move on if, even if an asteroid doesn't do the trick for you in the end. Yeah. All right, man. Well, Listen, well, have well, a happy new, new year. year. All right. Thanks. Take yeah. care. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Now it looks like the phones are, are full, but for some reason my lines aren't showing up. So let me, let me just see if this is a call. Hey man, you're on the air. Who's this? Uh, hey, this is Sam from Kansas city. Hey, Sam from Kansas City. How are you? Good. Uh, do you remember my call at all from uh, a few weeks ago? Uh, remind, okay re not. refresh my memory, and right. I'll, I'll let you know. I, I was the kid who uh, said that he took a finasteride. Uh, I do, and you had and then, you had you yeah. had numbness of the penis right away. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. So how are you I'm doing now? To... Fine. Fine. I'm taking a full dose of finasteride. I did half at first. I went to my doctor. He just said cut it up in half. Right. Uh, so I've been doing that. And then uh, after about a week or so, I started taking full doses. This is, uh, like, uh, this is my fourth day on it. And uh, the side effects I was telling you about now, uh, they're gone. Oh, that's great. So, I'm really happy for yeah, you. So that, 
Me too. That's a relief. Uh, there's one thing I noticed. I'm not really too worried about it, um, but I noticed at nighttime when I'm driving, uh, my vision, I think, might be getting affected. Uh, do you know anything about uh, finasteride and uh, how it affects, like, your vision? You know, it's, it, this is interesting. There, You know, there's nothing clinically that I've seen about this, but I have heard um, some anecdotal reports. A couple of guys have actually said that to me over the years. Mm -hmm. um, I, it always seems to be transient, so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. And it may not even be. It could just be coincidental also, but you can talk to your mm -hmm. doctor about it. I mean, did you yeah. ever have any issues when you were driving at night before? Uh, no. Um, and frankly, I'm really not concerned about it. I mean, I was just curious. I read something that, like, uh, it affects the way your pupils dilate, so that's why it only happens at night. But I just noticed, the, like, the stop sign, like, it has, like, a little, there's, like, a little blur beneath it. Like, like, like a halo. So, yeah, like a halo, like a halo underneath it, yeah. Yeah, I have, really heard, I have heard of that. Um, it's not very common, and you don't really see it clinically. But, I mean, I have heard about it anecdotally. And, um, I mean, I wouldn't be too concerned about it unless it's really you know, something that's long lasting. And if, if you feel that it's affecting your, your eyesight, then obviously get off the drug, talk to your doctor about it. But mm -hmm. you know, it, well, it's not. a lot of the, a lot of these types of side effects, if it's related to finasteride are transient. Um, I've never, I've never heard the vision thing getting worse for people. Uh, the only time it's been reported to me or every time it's been reported to me, it's been reported and, and people have contacted me and said that it's gone away. So it's been transient. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only information I have on, on it personally. But you could talk okay. to your doctor about it. Yeah, definitely. You know, but I'm, I'm really happy for I'm glad. Listen, it takes guts to have sexual side effects to what, oh. what you had and then to go back on it. Mm -hmm. And well, that means you were really motivated, obviously. Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've heard about this drug for years. You know, I was 18 when I started going bald. And, you know, that was just so traumatic for me. Uh, like, I would... I would talk to like my family and they just thought I was crazy. And that just, you know, made me even more frustrated. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, you and other people have been that there are similar positions before. Like everyone just thinks you're crazy that like, cause they don't think you're losing your hair, but you are. And, Oh my God. Um, when, especially when I was, when I was young, you know, when it, when it first started, that's all I was getting. What's you have so much hair in your head. What are you worried about? You know, yeah, they, that's really that's, is, what do you, why do you think I like styling it this way? You know, that's what I would tell people. Do you think that I, yeah. you know, I would love to wear a ton of hairspray? You think I do this by choice? It's because I'm losing my hair. There's no other reason for it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you have to like show, yeah, but, show them the thinning spots. And then they're like, oh, well, you know what? You still have so much hair. They don't understand the, the progression of hair loss and how it starts. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I just hate, I hated having to explain it to people. So I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and I, it, it was, I mean, I understand because, like, I'm, I'm this little kid bitching about his hair, you know, uh, so, but I, so I understand, like, the pushback I got from my family because they're, you know, they, they have their own lives to live, but, um, but they just, they didn't even think it was happening. Like, it's, they're like, oh, that's just your hairline, and it's just, I don't know. I thought that, like, you know, my mom, she, uh, it, I'm sure it came from my mom's side. My, uh, my grandpa, he went bald, like, in high school. Uh, my uncle, about the same. Uh, I got a little luckier and went bald and or started going bald in college. I'm still fortunate enough to have a full head of hair. Or not a full head of hair, but what looks like a full head of hair. But, um, well, but she I, I, didn't think I was going well, bald. And that's, or she still that's, doesn't think that. And that's the way that it is. You know, you know your hair, you know. Mm -hmm. And I tell people this all the time. If you think you're losing your hair, you are. It's not like, oh, it's It's seasonal. You, if you think you're losing your hair, you're losing your hair. You know the changes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really, it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to treat it. I'm glad yeah, that, and I'm glad that you, you know, got past the initial side effects. And I'm glad, you know, I would, I would love you to continue to call in and, and, you know, update people because there's a lot of young guys just like you. How old are you now? I'm 22 now, so I've been going through this for four years. Yeah, a lot of young guys so. just like you who they want to hear your experiences and you're a guy that had some side effects who then took the chance to get back on it. And you know, then they went no away. Side effects now. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think that's an important story for people to mm -hmm. hear. And, yeah. And, uh, 
you know, I when I was eighteen, um, I all I was doing was using minoxidil, and, and that wasn't working. And uh, you know, I thought about using finasteride, but I read about all these terrible side effects, and it just like they made it seem like it was poison. And because uh, there's there's propeciahealth.com, and that's like always the first thing to come up when like you're like googling like finasteride or propecia, and that's all you get. And you know, so if you're if you're a teenager who's concerned about losing his or her hair, I mean, usually his hair, um, you 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 don't really think there's any there's any other option but this ineffective or it's not completely ineffective but marginally effective minoxidil. Um, and well, well, propecia you, you propecia is taken off the table. You know, it's completely taken off the table, and I get that. If I was your age, mm-hmm. and if I was or just starting in the balding process, and I read what's out there online, I wouldn't take it. I'm very honest about it. The guys that are out mm-hmm. there pounding that drum have been extremely effective. Now, yeah, and and I get I it. Take it for four years for them. Because but but of, uh, but them. but but I I have to say that I get it. I if I was in that position, it's very possible the type of person that I am. Um, you know, I probably would have been part of that campaign and maybe brought it to a much higher level. And um, mm-hmm. it's just because you know when you're when you're affected so badly by something, you want to let the world know. So I completely understand it. I do think it's unfortunate for guys like you, um, who you know. The, I mean, you waited four years, but and I and I'm I'm glad that you're doing well now. But I think it's unfortunate for a lot of guys who aren't kind of allowed to see both sides of the coin. You know, when I speak about my experiences or have people like you who speak about their experiences, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are angry about that. They, you know, they, they, they don't like the fact that I'm being honest about a drug that changed my life. They want everyone to speak badly about it. And if you don't, then there's something wrong with you and you're, you, you're one of the bad guys. And that's just, you know, that's unfortunate. Look at Andrew Zarin, yeah. you know. He held off for a long time, and he held off based on my recommendation to hold off because I said, you know, you really want to be sure before you take this drug. And How's he, he doing so far on he's, it? He's on it three weeks, and he's doing great. He has no, no right. adverse side effects. Um, right. You know, and I think you're going to be another success story. So, you know, just keep us posted, man, all right? Yeah, I sure hope so. Hey, um, so, um, so how exactly... I mean, I, I've read about how it works, but like, so I've noticed that when I look in the when I look in the mirror lately, that like instead of I I was mainly just concerned about the receding hairline at first, but you know, taking this uh, finasteride kind of awakens like my uh, you know my habit of like looking at my hair again, and I and I noticed that uh, you kind of become hypersensitive. Started, you're yeah, you're well, looking just, at it all the yeah. time, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and I just noticed that. Um, it's been thinning throughout now. I mean, still, everyone thinks I have a full head of hair. Um, right. But, um, but like, I'll look at it at different angles, and I, I notice that there's miniature, miniaturization, like, all throughout uh, my head. Right. So does, does, does it, um, does it, does uh, finasteride stop, uh, does, does it simply stop uh, miniaturization, or does it, uh, does it reverse it, or does it, uh, or do the mini dry hairs fall out and there's some chance that they come back in well full heads of hair or well here, here's the thing you know i mean the theory is and the thought and in the way that it's been proven to work clinically and the way that it worked on me and other people is you know it definitely reverses the miniaturization process if you are one of the guys it works for um in my particular mm-hmm. case i had a lot of miniaturized hair in the crown i had actually was losing hair and miniaturizing on the sides of my scalp as well that all reversed uh, within a few months, actually. I was one of the lucky ones where I caught things in an antigen phase and things really thickened up. So I can say from my own experience that there's no doubt that uh, it reverses the miniaturization process. Um, there are some guys who will kind of catch it where it'll push it into a telogen phase and that miniaturized hair will fall out. And then once it starts to cycle normally, it'll grow into a completely robust, you know, uh, Full, full blown hair and you know continue in a stronger antigen phase and live a longer life. So I would hmm. say that's really the process. It, it's it's a drug that can reverse the miniaturization process and uh, keep your hair in an antigen phase longer and just kind of help it to grow you know to cycle naturally. Now 
I did lose some ground over the years. I have not kept a completely full head of hair by any means, and I've been on this drug for about 20 years. But oh, so you've lost drug, you lost hair while on the drug. I've still? lost very slow. I've lost ground very slowly over the years, and it's been hmm. minimal at best. Most people would never notice, but I have had to, you know, wear a little bit more paint in the back. Mm-hmm. And um, but that's over a tw- course of 20 years. I started to lose my hair at 21. I'm going to be 50 years old this year. Mm-hmm. And I, you still like you have a full head of hair. I feel pretty I mean, good. Me. Yeah, I feel pretty good about <laughs> it. You know, so great. You know, um, I, I think that, listen, you're on the drug. Just continue to do well on the drug. I wouldn't think about it too much. And if you mm-hmm. are one of the guys that res- that's, a, that's a good responder, you're going to see the, the way the process works. And the way it works in most for most guys is it reverses that process and kind of slows down uh, the progression for many years. Yeah, I really hope that I'm one of those guys that it works for. I am hoping so much. Well, dude, just stay po- stay positive. Try not to try not to obsess about it too much. You're on it now. You got right. past those side effects. Great. Don't even think about it if you can. All right. All right, man. Yeah. All right. Have All a happy right. New Thank Year. You so much. All right. Take care. You too. All right. Triple eight, I'm sorry to cut you off, dude. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. I'm going to take another call before we take a break. Let's see who this is. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Joe. I'm calling from uh, New York. Hey, Joe from New York. What's happening? Um, well, I'm, first of all, thank you for your book from many years ago. It saved me a lot of agony. Oh, um, great. <laughs> I started to... Uh, I started to lose my hair um, probably when I was in my early 20s, um, and um, it was, um, like everybody else, really traumatic, and uh, I did a lot of the, you know, <laughs> I, I chased the snake oil. Of course. Uh, that's, what, that's what we did. <laughs> that's what we did, because I was uh, also in, uh, at that time, I was, I was uh, seeking a profession in the, uh, in the performing arts, so I was freaking out that I was losing my hair. Uh, I have since become a psychologist, and, <laughs> oh, wow. and uh, so uh, I really know what the psychological implications of this are. And I now, know, are, are a lot of your patients uh, uh, hair loss sufferers, or do they talk about their hair loss? You know, uh, I know that you can't get into specifics, obviously, but yeah, I obviously can't get as. I have. I, I would say that I, it, it isn't part of the. You know, the most presenting. You know, the biggest presenting picture that they come in with. Right. Um, they are uh, a lot of my. A lot of my patients are. Um, um, you know, are are, are very uh, high up executives, CEOs, things like that. Some of them don't have any hair. Many of them don't have any. Hair. Right. Sure. Uh, but it's probably the younger ones who come in that I'm working with the young adults, the ones in their 20s, some of them, you know, even earlier than that. Um, I work uh, because of the population that I work with is a tremendous amount of stress. And so some of these, uh, some of the actual disorders that I have are people with trichotillomania. They're actually hail polar. Yeah, wow. Um, and that's a whole different kind of thing because the hair isn't growing only well, that, because that, the hair a, actually is growing. Well, that's, an, o, that's an OCD issue. Yeah, that's an OCD issue, and it's a whole other other ball game. But um, but I do have those young people who do come in. I just had one in the other night who, uh, you know, was talking about how he gets, um, you know, somebody will on the job, you know, razz him about the fact that he's losing his hair. And this is a guy who's got already confidence issues, right. and then to have that on top of it becomes a, a difficult experience. But oh, look, if you if you read the them. if you read the ball truth back in the day, then you are totally you know. You, you, you see, I, you understand what these guys are going through. I totally get it, and I to, and I know what the panic was for me because I had family members who were, you know, they were noticing that I was losing my hair, and then they were saying things about it, you know, and it yeah. was uh, like, like you ha- like you have some sort of control over it. Like I have some sort of sort of control over it. Like it's any of their business. Right. <laughs> it's like you're going to tell your mother, oh, you know what, Ma, your ass is getting really big. Right. Exactly. You know. It's just insanity, and yeah. and, uh, and you know, it definitely comes from my mother's side. My my grandfather, her father was bald, and I knew him quite well. And my mother actually has no hair. Um, wow. and she's in her eighties. Right. So so this, I came by it honestly. But I have to say that one of the things that I did, I started with uh, minoxidil initially, right. um, which clearly st- you know slowed down the the, the fallout right. uh, when I was when I was younger. And then when Propecia came out. 
I was really right on board, and I went to my doctor right away, and I said, you know, I really want to try this, and um, and he was, well, you know, looked up the research, well, it only works in maybe a third of the population, blah, blah, blah. I said, doesn't matter. I want to try it. I mean, you know, what have I got to lose? This is, this may be my, uh, my end game here. Right. And, um, and it was a lifesaver. I mean, I can't believe how it stopped the fallout and then regrew hair for me. And, um, it's, it's bizarre. I mean, I'm I'm lucky. Uh, I'm 57 now. I I'm in good shape with it. So how? Uh, so you've been on it for what? Since since 1998, 99. Yeah. Whenever. Whenever. I mean, it's been a long, 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 long time. Yeah. Um, now he would not. I had wanted him because it, you know Propecia is expensive. And, you wanted Proscar, um, yeah. And I wanted Proscar, and he wouldn't do it, and so I've remained on the Propecia. Then of course we went to the. Um, you know, the generic, uh, I guess... Finasteride. Yeah, the Finasteride, yeah. about six months ago, and I forgot who put it out, some some Indian company, Dr. Something or other. Dr. Reddy. That's the one, Dr. Yeah. Reddy. And when I went to go pick up my prescription, um, it um, they gave me that. And so, okay, it was, it was a good 20 bucks less, which was great. But I, and this is why I'm calling... I then began to comb the internet for information about the effectiveness of Dr. Reddy's right. uh, versus um, Propecia, because I'd been on Propecia for so long. Came up with some different kinds of, um, you know, p- people posting on forums, and you don't know what, you don't know what, what you're getting sometimes with that. But you don't know uh, what you're getting at all with that. I, right. I, I, I have the most traffic private forum in the world for hair loss, and I can tell you that um, I tell people. Don't believe what you read on the forums. You have right. to do your own research. Right, right. But I couldn't find anything really to nail down whether the effectiveness was different because what I noticed for myself was a change uh, when I switched over to the Dr. Reddy's. And I noticed I began a, a shedding phase. Interesting. Um, and this is after being on, on the drug since 1997. Since You yeah. said it since it came out, right? So it was it actually was approved in December of 97, so you probably got on it around 98. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, w- I will tell you that, and this is not to alarm you, but you are obviously seeing what's happening. I, I have known, at least anecdotally, a lot of people who have been on brand name for a long time who switched to a generic because sometimes they just go to the drugstore and right. the generic is sitting there waiting for them. Right. And they get on to, like, it's the same thing. You know, there's different, each, each generic has different fillers. Right. Uh, we don't know exactly if the finasteride, even though it's generic, it, I mean, it's supposed to have the same molecular compound, but, mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, who knows? Right. Uh, there are plenty of people who do well on generics, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a guy who, um, and I'll tell you a story in, in brief, I was in San Francisco a few months ago, and I had no more finasteride. I, I had forgot my Propecia. And I, I take the drug once a week, and, mm-hmm. but I forgot, to t- I forgot to bring it with me. And I was like, I was going on like 10, 12 days or whatever, well, almost two weeks. And I was like, I got to get a prescription. So I called the doc, told him to call the prescription in, went to this drugstore, which was close to the hotel. They gave me generic. Mm-hmm. And asked about it. So, cause we didn't, they, and it was actually, um, it was specifically written for brand name Proscar. Mm-hmm. Make a long story short, they had to call another drugstore that was all the way across town for me to mm-hmm. get it. So I took the time, got into that rental car, drove across San Francisco mm-hmm. to get the, uh, the brand name because mm-hmm. I've been on it for so long. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my advice to you, if you're asking my advice, you should speak to your doctor is, to see, especially if you see you're having issues, get yourself back on brand name if you can. Well, I am. I went back on the brand name. Okay. Um, what I had said when I after I tried it for two, I think it was about two to three months, and I started to notice a real change with it. And um, and as I said, the shedding began, and you know it, there was no mistaking. I mean, no mistaking. And then I was reading on some of the forums that you, when you make that change, often you will get that, but then it will go away. But you know what? You know how the panic sets in. You're like, I don't need this. <laughs> well, yeah. Listen, it, it can be transient for many reasons, but why screw with it? Okay. Right. Get yourself right. back on it. You'll, you'll eventually, you've been on it for, you've done well on it for so long, you'll right. eventually level out again. Now, how are you doing right now? 
now I'm doing great again because I went back on it. That's great. Um, I also had stopped all the minoxidil for quite some time, but when this when the shed started, I began the minoxidil as well. Right. And then uh, because I figured, let me hedge my bets here. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, this is the same kind of thing I do with my own patients. When you know, I, I know what goes on with generics. Some some people can take generic Prozac, and some people cannot take, take generic Prozac. They don't do as well on it. And, so and you know, and a lot of times, I, each, I each generic, is, many generics are different. You can get a generic from, say, uh, uh, Teva Pharma, Pharmaceuticals, you know, the Israeli pharmaceutical company, and then you can get it from, you know, some other, you know, Indian company. And there's the list of fillers are so different. Mm-hmm. You just don't know how your body's going to react to that. How it's going to react. So I went back to the Propecia within three months. It stopped the shedding again, and I'm, I'm stabilized again. Well, I'm really um, happy for you. Man. It's, ni- it's nice to speak to, a, to someone old school who read the or, or original Ball Truth. Oh, my God, I still have the book. That's great, man. <laughs> I was like, this book saved my life. I even shared it with a friend of mine and said, you got to read this book. I said, this is, and he then went on Pro, uh, Propecia, and uh, he actually had the same, same kind of experience. He went on the Dr. Reddy's, and when I called him, and I actually called him and said, something's up with this Dr. Reddy's thing. I'm, I'm noticing a big change. And he said to me, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm in the same situation. I mean, my only, my only gripe about it, now, you, you mentioned something else that you take. Do you take, now, I know that Proscar and Propecia are basically the same, same thing, but right. they're different. They're different. And, different doses. You know, uh, what about what? Uh, so Proscar is a higher dose of it. Proscar is a five milligram dose of finasteride, and Propecia and what do you, do you is take that once a week. I take that? one five milligram dose once a week. Now you know I kind of loaded my body with the drug for many years, mm-hmm. and um, I wanted to kind of see if I can maintain my DHT levels with just one dose, one hot, higher dose once a week. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing this for at least a decade. Mm-hmm. And um, it seems to be working. So. Uh, you know, I mean, occasionally I'll I'll miss a dose. You know, uh, but I but I basically I take the Propecia, you know, daily. Yeah, I'll take um, my dose tonight. Actually, uh, I ta- I usually take it after the show, so or like the night of the show. And and cost wise, is there a is it considerably different than the Pro- Propecia? Uh, it's it's more. It's actually the pill itself is more expensive than the Propecia. Uh, there's a considerable difference, but most people will that quarter the five milligram dose and take that. You know, mm-hmm. so once you spread it out like that, it's much 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 less expensive. Now you have to understand. I started taking five milligrams every day. That's how I started the drug. But, you know, uh-huh. when I was do- when I was doing my research before uh, Propecia was approved. There was a five milligram dose of finasteride, right? And, and that's because my doctor had talked about that, and and I said, "Can I cut that up?" Also, I I said to him, "If you pre- prescribe finasteride that way for me, my insurance plan will probably pay for it, but it won't pay for Propecia." That's correct. That's and correct. that's been the pain in the neck. I mean, and look, it's a hundred bucks a month. I mean, it's not going to kill me, but yeah, um, be nice to have. Well, I always pay. I, I and to this day, even though I'm almost fifty, I still pay out of pocket for my Proscar because, in essence, it's it's insurance fraud if I were to say that I'm taking Proscar right. for right. you know for right. or, you know right. it's basically prescribed for benign prostate hyperplasia. So, exactly. So being in the public eye, I've obviously had to kind of go the straight route. But yeah, a lot of guys will get Proscar and they'll charge their insurance. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, but he, he wasn't even going down that route with me. He said to me, look, and you know, he's a great doctor, but he, and he said to me, look, here's the deal. He said, if I could, I could do that, he said, but here's the research, and he does his, his, his homework. He said, the research is that this, is, this Propecia is designed in this one milligram tablet to do what it says it's going to do. That's right. So if you're going to take this other stuff and you're going to cut it up, you don't know, how, you're not cutting it up evenly. You're not going to get the same kind of, you know, effect. I don't think that it's going to be, I don't think it's meant for that. So I think you really should take what the pill is. Well, I think, I think as a physician, that's a really reasonable uh, response. And I think he gave you a good explanation. You know, there is some theory and there's some thought that maybe the, the actual drug, the active ingredient, finasteride, is not distributed evenly throughout the entire pill. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you may not be getting an even dose. Um, right. I, I understand all that. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of guys do very well quartering it, but what's the difference? It's a hundred bucks a month, so you don't go drinking, you know, one night. You and know? I don't drink, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> no, so I, you know, I went, but I did go back on it, and uh, and so did my friend who uh, who. No, now, back now on what it. made you call? You've been, you've been, you know, a fan of the Ball Truth for a long time. What made you call the show tonight? 
you know what's so interesting? I had no idea that you had a show, and you did a um, you did a, a spot with uh, Ron Hoffman. Uh, I guess uh, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. And I listened to I download his podcast. I used to listen to him on WOR out here, and uh, loved his stuff. And he's a bright, bright guy. With yeah, he's a smart guy. Medicine. Amazing guy. Um, so I used to, you know, because I keep up with all of these kinds of things for my patients. Because a lot of my people, especially when you're in this field, and I'm not an MD, I'm a PhD. So, right. but I'm, but I'm the person that they see every week uh, that gives the feedback to the MDs about medications. But a lot of my people don't like to take, you know, necessarily start with psychotropic medications. So I have always been a real complementary medicine freak, and I stay up to date on those things. Well, I downloaded his pod, I downloaded his podcast now, and you were on. Um, uh, a couple months ago, and I, I said, oh, my God, you've got a podcast, which I've now downloaded. But um, And then I, I, I said, my, you know, I remember your book. I have your book. And then I had this question about the Propecia and the Dr. Reddy's because I had been concerned about it. And I thought, let me give this guy a call and see what his thoughts are about it. So, well, listen, man, I'm glad, I'm glad you called. I'm glad that you just happened to, uh, to download uh, that podcast with Dr. Hoffman. He's a great guy. I've known him for many years. Yeah, uh, we. I, I start one of my flagship stations back in New York was WOR Radio, and he was on uh, w- there. You WOR. go. And I think yeah. that's where I heard about your book. I think that's exactly where I heard about your book, and that's when I got it. That's great. So that's you're you're, you're, you're old school, man. That was a long and, time ago. Yeah, and and being in the field, I'm you know I am very you know when you you've had a couple of people on, uh, I listened to your last couple of podcasts. So you know and the the psychological implications of this when I hear. The distress in some of these young guys, especially, I think, wow, you know, they they can't. They also need to know what to say to people in these situations, and they need good feedback. And when I talk to my patients and say to them, I'll, I recommend your book, number one. Oh, thank you. And I also say to them, you know, you might want to consider, you know, taking Propecia, um, and you know, this is this is an option for you. Or well, let them let them know, you know, that they need a safe place, and there's you know, not a lot of places they can talk about it. They could always call the show. They can watch Absolutely. us. And, you know, Absolutely. And we've You're on my list to, to refer people to. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen, it's a real pleasure. Happy New Year. And, Happy New Year to you, and, and I, thanks so much for your, uh, your information and for doing this service. That's you got great. it, man. And I'm really happy that you've done so well on Finasteride for so long. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I am, too. I'm very pleased. It it's, uh, gives me the confidence that I need. Well, so, continued uh, success. Yeah, thanks All so right. much. You take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 888 Guys, I will get you phone calls in a minute, but I have to take a break. Um, if you're, you know, if you have questions, concerns about your hair loss, I could stay on a little bit longer tonight if need be. I want to take as many calls as possible. This is the last show of 2014, uh, and we have a lot, of talk, a lot to talk about, a lot of questions. A lot of guys are, you know, considering making, you know, a big decision about what they're going to do about their hair loss in 2015. A lot of guys are on the fence about surgical hair restoration or taking the Propecia plunge. Give us a call if you have those questions. 888-659-3727. I'm Spencer Coburn. You're listening to and watching The Ball Truth. Stay with us. The winner of seven prestigious Golden Forehead Awards. My family's always arguing. It always starts off innocent, and then it gets vicious right away. So I was like, hey, looks like you're losing some hair. At least my wife's not a whore. Spencer David Cobrin. Hey, guys, welcome back. Thanks for uh, hanging out. 888-659-3727. I'm going to try something new here. Uh, we have a, a separate Skype computer. I'm going to see if I can actually uh, get... Joe Tillman via Skype, and I will also be able to take your phone calls and send my uh, feed via my other Skype line to GFQ. So let's see if we can make all this work. Um, Give me one second, guys. Let me uh, give Joe a call. Let's see how this works. That should be it. Joe, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, can. All right, man. Awesome. I think I think I could hear you. Everyone could hear you too. Right on. Are this, we on air? This is working. We're on the air, man. Cool. Hey, man. I'm on the radio. Right <laughs> on. <laughs> so sorry uh, about that. I'm, I'm glad we're able to work this out. You know, we can do this from now on, actually, and we'll I'll actually be able to use this 
once I, I, I replace the video card on the second computer, you can actually Skype in through us and we can then Skype to GFQ. So as far Very as cool. video Skype as well. It certainly sounds better. That's that's for sure. It's a oh, dude, you sound more, like you're, you're, solid, you sound uh, like you're right here. And I feel like it too. You're it's welcome. Good. Welcome. The beauty of Skype, man. So uh, obviously you're listening to the program. A lot of calls tonight. You know, it's interesting to get like a, a guy who's been. He never even knew I had a show, and he just picked up my book in 1998, and it changed his life. And you just now found out you had a show? Yeah, he actually, I was on the Dr. Ronald Hoffman show a couple of weeks ago, and I guess he's a fan of Ron Hoffman, and he heard me, and he's like, oh my God, I have this guy's book, I have a question, and I don't, oh, right know, I don't know, you probably weren't listening, but he's a guy, he's on Propecia for, you know, since 1998, switched to Dr. Reddy's product, started to shed. After twenty yeah, years, yeah, I I heard that part. I, I just didn't hear the uh, the part about him not realizing he had a show. But I mean, that's that's. Um, Believe me, that was unbelievable to me too. Well, what, what, switching to Doctor Reddy and then, and then no, how, the show? How, how someone didn't know I had a show. Oh yeah, well I mean, <laughs> it's like if, if we really live in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's um, yeah. I mean, you, you don't have reverence to your show in your book, so um, no. Who knows? But uh, anyway, no, it's uh, it's it's a story that you know I, I've been hearing um, for quite a while, and uh, and I, I know you you've heard the same story, and um, I had I hadn't heard it from Doctor Reddy's product, but um, I, I'd heard it you know from multiple sources of the generics. Um, some guys sometimes guys don't even know um, which brand it is; they just know it's generic because it says finasteride on the box. So it's. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Absolutely, and, um, yeah. No one really knows why. I know, I know. But it is what it is. And I, I tell people, you know, just if you've been on the drug for so many years, I know that when you go to the pharmacy, they're going to automatically give you this generic finasteride now. Ask for the brand name. And if they won't give it to you, all you do is have to call your doctor and make sure he prescribes brand only. Right. And your insur right. and your insurance will take care. Of well, your insurance won't take care of it because it's Propecia, but they'll prescribe it or they'll they'll give it to you. I I, I was actually speaking to a a young man um, in New York a, a few weeks By ago. By the way, did, had, you, did, did you just do something to your sound? Because now you sound great. I uh, I turned off my my Bluetooth headset. <laughs> That's exact. Now it doesn't sound like you're talking through a tube. Yeah, I, I well I did that because some of the guys online um, were saying that it sounded like I was. Um, talking through a hose or that I was in a bathtub. Yeah, yeah. Now, while I may be in a bathtub anyway, it doesn't mean I have to sound like it. <laughs> that Joe? Joe sounds like he's talking through the artist. That is just wrong. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> talking through the new artist. See the art <laughs> That's good. That's good. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? The, I have no uh, idea. I, I never listened to you. I, and, and I don't listen to you, but, you know, know. it's just – the, the 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 blobbing around just sounds good. Yeah, well, that's, that's how we do it. Uh, that's how we do it. Talking about well. talking about Doctor Reddy's. I'm gonna take a couple, oh, yeah. couple of phone calls, but listen, I, I've actually heard some good things about Doctor Reddy's product. So this is not the yeah, bash. I, I had too. This is not the bash Reddy's product. Um, just it just happens. It just happens. So to me, it's like if it ain't broke, don't you know, don't fix it. There's no re if you're gonna just to save a couple of bucks. I just spit on the microphone. There's no reason to <laughs> to take a chance with your hair. That's just the way that I feel about it. And I hear these stories all the time. This is a prime example of a guy that's been on the drug for almost, you know, whatever, 15, 16 years. And yep. all of a sudden things change because he switched from brand name to generic. It happened. Well, what I heard him what I heard him reference before you take the next call was that, you know, being a psychologist, psychologist? He was a psychologist, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. PhD. Um, when he prescribes um medications himself that he is actually seeing a difference in generic versions of the medications that he prescribes yeah well i don't think he could actually prescribe medication himself because he, he's a, he's a psychologist but he when he when he you know he treats patients and i'm sure that he refers them to a psychiatrist i'm assuming because that's what psychologists do and he's part of the whole you know medication management aspect of people's you know that and usually a lot of people will see both a psychologist and a psychiatrist so they just kind of do like a medication 20 minute session with their shrink and their psychologist does the heavy work so he probably sees a lot of these guys being prescribed you know um generic uh, uh, prozac for instance 
and they're not doing as well as they would normally do on the brand name. And that happens. Isn't that, isn't that what I said? <laughs> kind of, except you said that he was prescribing the medication himself. So no, I, I know. I had I know. to make that clear <laughs> in case people are thinking that you're crazy. Well, I am, but that's, yeah. that's beside the point. No, but he made anyway. a, he made a lot of good points, and it's yeah, it's, no, he, he did. He, he was he's a good caller, and it's it's good to hear that from a professional. It's not just you know two guys you know talking about it who we hear all this anecdotally, but when you see it, when people see it in their own practice, it kind of you know it definitely strikes a chord. Let, let's see, uh, let me see who I'm going to take. Um, take line one. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hey, Spencer, this is John from New York City calling. You may remember me since I've called into sh the show a few times in the past, most recently about a year ago. I do remember you. I remember your cadence especially. Oh, gee, yeah, everyone says that about my voice. First off, I love the Night Ranger during the break, Don't Tell Me You Love Me. <laughs> Thanks, I man. Saw him in the city about, yeah, I saw him in the city about, um, over the summer, really good show. That's all. And by the way, it's a compliment. And, you know, I just happen to recognize you have a very you know, a specific type of cadence. And I usually recognize most guys that call the show. Well, yeah, everyone tells me that. Anyway, um, this is my situation. I know, um, you may remember a little bit of it. Um, I noticed my own hair loss about four and a half years ago. And after a year about of relative inaction, accompanied by the feelings of shock and depression, I got a prescription for finasteride, of which I've been taking one milligram per day for about the past three and a half years. Right. Although my hair... Although my hair loss has drastically decreased, I've experienced very little to no regrowth, but more, more significantly, I've experienced terrible side effects, like loss of libido. Also, my muscles have felt very soft and flabby, even after very intense workouts, and I've noticed increased fat gain around my midsection as well. well. Those are all very common side effects of the drug. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of people who experience the side effects complain of those side effects. Okay, cool, because that's what I was going to say, too, that how I know that these side effects are not um, psychosomatic since I've been a hardcore weightlifter for 20 years, and yeah, I never I don't, felt this way before I started taking the drug. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that, you know, it's one thing to say that sexual side effects are possibly psychosomatic, because that's a possibility for, for, for some guys, but the, you know, the, the muscle issues that you're having and the fact that you, re you do feel like your muscles are softer and you, you've gained more weight— um, we hear these things, and there's, there's, yeah, th there's definitely some reality to that. There's no doubt about it. So, yeah, you are one of the guys who are suffering from the adverse side effects. Now, we say your libido has, uh, has dropped. Are you still able to, you know, enjoy sex, well, or are you just not well, as into it as you used to be? Well, the, the, it, it, re it really tanked to the point that it became, like, very, very noticeable. Right. I mean, I knew, knew this for a fact. I've been able to counteract it with, quote, unquote, another pill. Right. You could probably guess. Another blue is, pill? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, let me tell you, despite these terrible side effects, I still continue to take finasteride because I just really cannot imagine living life as a bald man. As you can probably remember, I'm an avid participant in the rock and roll scene. I've loved it, you know, ever since I was a kid. I, 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 do, I do remember that. Don't you, don't, don't you do like a Metallica cover band or something? Or was that you? No, no, no. I don't do a Metallica cover band. I've just played in like garage bands and stuff like that. There's another but caller I, that, I, I that actually was in a Metallica cover band. So I guess that's not you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God, oh, that's so awesome, you know. But anyway, I love to crank up this 80s rock when I drive out to the clubs, you know, which makes me feel alive and energized and inspires me to have a great time. Yet I don't know if I could ever experience these positive feelings as a bald man, you know. So, so, that, um, so nonetheless, this, that despite the fact that I told you these side effects have become terribly overbearing right. recently, and, um, and, the last, the last, and the last thing I want is for them to become permanent. Therefore, I think I may have to re very reluctantly force myself to stop taking finasteride as soon as next month, just because these side effects are really becoming overbearing. Well, you know? th this is, what I, you this know is what I would do if I were you, and you should talk to your doctor about this, because I'm not giving you medical advice because I'm not a physician, but um, wean off the drug if you're going to stop taking the drug. Start with maybe taking the drug every other day and see if, in fact, you, you still have these adverse side effects. It's very, po yeah. it's very possible that you can kind of, um, you know, kind of lower the incidence of, of your personal side effects, 
can't think tonight by lessening the dosage and still and still have the same uh, benefits. You've been on the drug for three and a half years, so it's very possible that you can kind of do intermittent therapy, maintain your DHT levels without having the same adverse side effects. Yeah, it's just like, like I said, these side effects have really, I, I think a lesser person, you know, a person who really didn't give a shit about their hair as much as I do would have gone off the drug like a long time ago. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, just like I am being into the rock and roll scene as much as I am, you know, hair is so integral. But anyway, this brings me to my question that I'm going to ask you. Um, It often boggles my mind how certain people have zero side effects while taking finasteride, while others like myself and several of my friends have had terrible side effects. Sure. So I, my question is kind of two-pronged. Um, I was wondering if you knew of any doctor that could give me advice on perhaps minimizing or eliminating these side effects, or maybe like um, a medication or supplement that I, that I could take to counteract these side effects. Well, those are those are good questions. Uh, there are doctors out there, and you know, guys who have been prescribing the drug for a long time that may have an idea as far as you know mitigating you know the issue and minimizing uh, the side effects. The first line of attack, and again, I'm not a doctor, is they will tell you to lower your dosage to see how you do because you may still have the same benefits without taking a daily dosage and and without experiencing the side effects. There are those, like I happen to take one pill, five milligram dosage once a week. Uh, you've been on the drug for three and a half years. It's very possible that one pill a week might do the trick for you. But the most important reason, in my view, for you to wean yourself off if you're going to get off or change, whatever it is, just don't stop the drug cold turkey because there Absolutely. are there are some people out there that have uh, reported that they kind of go through uh, an endo end endocrine or hormonal crash, which can then, you know, kind of set your body out of whack. So you should definitely yeah. wean yourself off really slowly. Um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was going to do, actually. I was thinking of maybe like taking a half a pill a day or something like that, you know? Well, you could start with that, or you can just take a pill every other day. Again, talk, you could talk to a doctor about that. But Joe, you're on the line still, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. I'm listening. Yeah, I mean, what do you think about this? Well, first off, um, I, I think it's interesting what he's talking about with the the additional side effects besides the sexual, um, like the, uh, the the muscle issue, and the um, and the weight gain in the, in the midsection, especially after having been so active in the gym for what would you say? Uh, is it John? Yeah, John, exactly. Yeah, John, you said you said you've been active in the gym for twenty years, right? And you've never had had anything like this before. No, I'm I'm um, thirty four now. And I've basically been lifting weights ever since, you know, freshman football in high school, which is when right. I was 14. And, I mean, there was a time when I was, like, almost 260 pounds and, like, a real kind of power lifter. I've lost a bit of yeah. weight since then, but I never had anything close to this before. That's why, that's how come I know it, and that's how, came, how come it's so pronounced to me. Well, you know, you're, you're, you're still, still a young guy, 34 years old, so you, you shouldn't be experiencing these, these issues um, outside of the the. the the, the side effects from the medication. I mean, it, you know, it, I'm not a doctor. It's just, you know, my opinion. But um, what's interesting is I had the same issue when I was taking Avidart. I've been a, a user of, of finasteride and Propecia or Pro Proscar since 2002. Um, but for a couple of years, I took a break and switched over to Dutasteride. And that's when I had a similar issue that you're having. And um, I wasn't so active in the gym, but my weight gain and my my um, what I called my bloat was not due to not being in the gym because I, I wasn't an active regular gym guy before I started taking it. But when I started taking the um, Dutasteride, switching from Finasteride, I had that that softer uh, feel in, in my muscles and I did have um, not just uh, a gain in my, my midsection but also um, I had facial bloat. Um, and it was gradual, but it, it was it was something that I attributed to the use of detasteride, and um, and then once I, I I stopped using it and went back to finasteride, I ha I didn't have those issues whatsoever. I did not have the sexual side effects on detasteride. It was simply the physical issues of um, of the bloat and the um, and the, the muscular change. Um, but what you're what you're going through, um, like Spencer said, that that definitely sounds like. Um, you know, it's, it's not anything re remotely uh, related to a psychosomatic effect. It is um, a, a direct of effect of the medication, and um, I agree with what he was saying. Taper off. I mean, um, I usually tell guys to um, when they're starting into this, if they're scared of side effects, 
um, of any sort, I say to, to, to ease yourself into it um, once a week, then twice a week, then three times a week, building yourself up um, to kind of build up a tolerance to it and see how you can tolerate it. And that way you're in a better position to kind of find a, a, um, a, a balancing point where you can tolerate it just enough to where it's still giving you a positive effect. But and, and that's speak to your doctor he, about it. Yeah, he may, he, you may be, John, you may be in the, um, you know, you, you may be in a position where since you've been on for so long that you can kind of maintain the benefits and lower by lowering the dose and lower lower the dose and not no longer suffer from the adverse side effects. So since since you're going to wean yourself off of it anyway, you might as well kind of see you know how long you you know I, I would do a long wean. I would do it for a couple of months minimum. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. So you can kind of gauge and see you know am I getting am I losing some weight? Do my muscles feel more firm? You know while I'm at this lower dosage. I'm sorry. And I'll tell you what's ironic too. Yeah. Um, like, like I, like I, I told you before, I used to, there was a point when I was almost 260 pounds, a real power lifter. Um, this wasn't until about a couple of years ago. I was almost like 250. Like I, w- I always liked being a power lifter. Then I, I, I heard like it alluded to that, um, that, that like increased cardio and like this may sound nuts, but you know. That like increased cardio, increased like blood flow could like could like make your hair look fuller or something. I heard it bandied about. So so what I did, I actually went on an extensive cardio regimen, and I lost like I lost like a bunch of weight. So it kind of contradicted that that you know I I lost a bunch of weight yet I still had fat in right. the midsection. So that's how mm-hmm. I know that the side effects you know were um. You, you, you know, we're not, we're, we're totally attributed to the drug, you know? Right. So well, what I was, go ahead. so what I was, I, I know about the tapering off that I was going to do, and I appreciate your advice on that. Um, the, the two things I was going to ask, do you, do you know any like special doctor maybe in and around New York city that could, that could give me advice, any, any other advice on, um, maybe more extensive advice on, um, possibly eliminating or, um, or mitigating the side effects? You know, the only doctors that are local to you, <clears throat> excuse me, are hair transplant guys that have, you know, that prescribe a lot of propecia. You can certainly speak to Dr. Robert Bernstein in New York, who's a dermatologist and probably deals with this issue a lot. I mean, you know, at least, you know, from what, from what I know about his practice is most of the guys that are using uh, finasteride aren't experiencing side effects. But I, I know, I think I spoke to him about one guy who did. I'm pretty sure it was Bob Bernstein. So he might be able to help you. But as far as mitigating the side effects, you know, honestly, I think most doctors are going to tell you to lower your dose to see how you do, because that might do the trick. As far as taking any type of herbal supplementation, you know, things of that nature, like you, like you asked me, I mean, the more stuff you put into your body, especially when you're experiencing these side effects, the more confused you may be. You may not know what's working and what's not working. You know, you, yeah. may, you may not know if, like, say you start to take some sort of herbal supplement while you're still on finasteride. And then your hair starts to fall out, but you're still taking finasteride. You just don't know. So I would probably, you know, if you want to call Bob Bernstein, he's, you know, he's he's available to you, and he's a, he is a der- remember, he is a dermatologist. I remember one time in the past that I called in the past. You said you knew a guy, Eric Braverman, or something like that. Sure. I, I mean, I'm not great friends with Eric Braverman, but I know Eric Braverman. He used to be on uh, my flagship station, WOR. I think he's on WABC now in new york okay and he is a like an anti-aging guy and he deals with a lot of um you know endocrine issues and hormonal issues and i think at one time i'm not sure if he's taking it now but i remember him asking me about it i think at one time he was considering using finasteride this was like you know 17 years ago and i've seen him on television pretty recently and he still has a full head of hair so he may he may even I'm not sure I, I don't know for sure but he may be taking the drug himself. Um, I think yeah. his business or I think it's Path Medical. Okay. And you can probably look up pathmedical.com and contact him. And he deals with a lot of hormonal issues, but he's really like an anti-aging guy. So yeah, maybe uh, he's a guy who could help you. Okay. So okay. So basically, so basically, your advice would be to just try and. W- take lo- le- a lesser dose and stuff. My advice would be to, you, obviously you need to talk to a doctor, but, um, and I can't give you medical advice, but at least anecdotally, um, I have known people who have suffered with significant adverse side effects who stuck with it like you, you have, and then they've lowered their dosage, 
they've eliminated their side effects or they've lessened the side effects greatly and they still maintain their hair. I think that's yeah. a, that's that is a possibility. But if you decide to stop taking the drug, you know, completely, you really again, I'm going to just you know, uh, I'm going to state this again. You need to taper off the drug. I would not just eliminate it from my system. Absolutely. No, I totally agree with you too. And that also brings me to my next point. I may call. I may call in like next week or the week after. Yeah, we're not going to. I don't think we're. I don't know if we're going to be on next week. If we are live next week, obviously call in. But we're definitely going to be on the week after. Okay, very cool. Because I was going to talk about, you know, how, how basically I'm interested in cutting edge and future treatments more than anything else. Because I believe a lot of t treatments today are very limited and not not nearly as effective as we need them to be. I, especially, that really just don't appeal to the majority of hair I think, loss I think everybody agrees with so, you. All the hair loss sufferers out there and our entire hair loss community agrees with you. So that would be a good conversation. So, um, you know, go to the ball, go to the ball next week. See if we're live. There's, there's a chance we will be. And if we are call in. Okay. All right, and actually, one, one last thing before I, one, one last thing, this will, this will only take a minute before right. I forget. Um, I emailed you something, a cutting edge treatment. There was an Egyptian der dermatologist. It was reported on in 2009 that she, she, uh, she, um, she did an experiment on eight children with alopecia areata. She um, took a biopsy of the healthy follicle stem cells of their scalp, multiplied them in culture for about a month, and then re-injected re them into the children's scalps. And a lot of the results were just totally out of this world. One kid grew a full head of hair, and, and I think like five others had at least 50% hair growth. I actually remember and, that. Um, I remember you speak. I, I think the last time we spoke was like in 2012, and I remember you sending that or saying that you were going to send it to me. I think that I got, I may have read it, to be honest with you, I don't remember, but I remember this conversation. Okay. The, the last thing I was just going to say, too, a lot of, I mentioned it to, like, a few other, like, prof, I, I mentioned it to a few people and professionals in the hair restoration industry, and a lot of them dismissed it, saying, oh, it's alopecia areata, it's not the same. And I know the differences between that and androgenetic alopecia. Sure. But the, method, the methodology of her experiment seems like it, it could totally work on people with androgenetic alopecia. Well, you know what? I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm into it. And, and you know what? Why don't you call me next week? We'll discuss it more. Um, I, I, you know what? I will look for that email. Do you, well, you can't give me your email actually, address. Why, Spencer, why don't you send it again? I, well, Spencer, that's actually what I did a few hours. I just, um, right when I left work at 5 o'clock, I emailed you at... Um, Ball truth, ball truth radio at gmail dot com. Okay. And I put the so I put the subject in as something like stem cell stem cell cell. Uh, I can't really speak. <laughs> stem cell study regrows hair. Something like that. It's in your inbox. All right. right. Well, I'll, I'll I'll ask my staff this to. Uh, so it was stem cell study regrows hair. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll see if I can get it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, listen. Right. I'm going to let you go. Have a happy new year. Good luck with everything. Obviously, call us back. But, you know, I mean, I do, I, I, I'm a believer. If you lower your dose, you may experience less side effects, and it's something you should consider. Okay, that's my best bet, you think? I, I think at this point, yeah, especially if you're considering getting off the drug completely. All right, yeah, because I think I may have to. Yeah. If, if lowering the doses, dosage doesn't eliminate these side effects, that's unfortunately what I think I'm going to have to do. All right, well, listen, talk to your be, doctor Be patient about it, with it, though. Be yeah. patient with it. Be patient with it. All right, man. We'll talk yeah. to you later. Have a happy new year. All right. Okay. Thanks happy new year, John. Bye. All right. Triple eight six five nine three seven two seven. Nice guy. I remember I remember that study that he talked about. I remember him calling. And this was like probably this is actually in the other house. So it's probably like 2011, yeah. 2012. Yeah, I, I remember I remember his voice from from uh from him calling him before. Did, did he say he called in a few weeks ago or was it even longer? No, it wasn't a few weeks ago. He hasn't called in for like a couple he, of years. He's, he's, he sounds so familiar. Yeah. Just, just like you say, the cadence of the way he speaks and, um, and of course, his accent. But No, I, rec I recognized him right away. <clears throat> yeah. Very nice guy. I mean, it sucks. I hate hearing guys who've, who are dealing with these side effects. Of course. You I know? mean, no one, no one wants, to, no one wants to, to go through that, of course. And it's, you know, it's basically the only thing out there that's really worth uh, taking if, if you don't have the side effects. And so yeah. when, when I hear about the, them having side effects, it's just kind of a, well, it's just a big bummer. No, but I, 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 I hate it. But it's also really important, not that I, obviously I don't want anyone to have side effects, but it's important that these guys yeah. call in 
just like the guys who call in about their positive experiences to talk about their negative experiences. There needs to be a balance. So, I agree. You know, it, agree. it is what it is. That's the drug. So let's take one more call. Hey, you're on the air. Who's this? Hi, Spencer. This is Joe from Boston, Hawaii. Hey, what's happening, man? Long time. Ah, uh, not too much. I know. I'm just, uh, you know, listening to the show. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good, Joe. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, Spencer, I had um, talked to you once or twice before, and um, I was listening tonight, and I heard about the uh, Propecia and the Dr. Reddy's and all that stuff. Yes. And um, I just want, kind of wanted to give you a little update um, on my uh, experience and what I went through. But um, Yeah. I had taken... Yeah, I had taken Propecia, uh, name brand, probably, I'm 42 now, um, probably when I was like 28, 29 years old, and I took it, you know, for a couple of years, and it did a lot of good for me, and um, my doctor put me on it. I had, you know, a few hair transplants in the past, and um, it was the best thing I ever did, but then as I got older, I started researching stuff in here and stuff, and I went off the drug. And it was the worst thing I ever did because I mm. lost a lot of ground. You, Even you, though I had the transplant. And you weren't having any yeah. side effects? You just got off it because of what you read? Just got off it because from what I remember, yeah, I just think I was nervous of, you know, what I was reading, what I heard, and all this other stuff. I understand and, you know, I was in my early early 30s, and I said, the hell with it. You know, I have all this new hair. I look great. So, you know what? I, I'm going to go off it. And... You know, I did, and like I said, I lost a lot of ground. Um, so over the years, my doctor was telling me you should go back on it, but I didn't listen to him, you know, because you think sometimes you're smarter than the doctor. But uh, Well, some, sometimes you anyways, are, but yeah, I mean, yeah. in this, in this yeah. case, maybe not. So anyways, um, long story short, I actually ended up having another transplant um, almost, almost two years ago. And... Uh, he did pretty much the crown area because my crown, he never really touched in the past. Right. He did pretty much from like, you know, the hairline to the middle of the head. And um, so I just had the crown done, made, you know, a little less than two years ago. So with that, he really wanted me to go on Propecia again because my crown was large. It was a large crown. Mm -hmm. And he only did around a 1,000 grafts, which probably isn't a lot. But he even told me, don't get your expectations, you know, too high. He said, it's not going to be full, but it's what we can get from the strip. Um, so, you know, he let me know pretty much it wasn't going to be full. Right. Um, but he said, I really want you on Propecia. So I said, okay. Now I went back on it, but it was Dr. Reddy's. Okay. Okay. I, I, I went mm -hmm. for the generic this time, trying to save a few bucks. Well, I went on it for about three or four months, and I think I had told you last time I talked to you, it made me extremely bloated. Okay. Um, I just felt heavy. I felt like I was getting man boobs. Um, it just didn't feel right on it. Um, so I didn't like the way I looked and I think it was starting to work though with my hair, sticking right. it up. but I just didn't like the way I looked. So I went off it. And then about a couple of months later, I was in his office and I said, you know, I want the name brand. So he wrote me a prescription for the name brand. And you know what he told me? because I was concerned about the side effects with what happened with Dr. Reddy's, he said, take one pill every other day. Right. So that's what mm -hmm. I've been doing for 14 months. And I'll tell you, it's, there's no side effects with the bloating, with the man boobs. Um, it's, you know, thickened my hair. It's gotten me back almost to where I was when I was taken it the first time oh, you know, in my great, early man. 30s. That's fantastic. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, and, you know, I just wanted to ask you guys, um, I know you're not a doctor and all that, but, and Joe could probably answer this too, um, you know, I, I asked him last time I saw him, I said, do you think I should maybe try to take it every day? Maybe I'll even get a little more than what I'm getting now. And he told me, he said, you know what, Joe? He said, don't mess it with anything that's working. He said, keep taking it just every other day. I, I think that's really sound advice. And the fact is, you know, you may not see that much of a benefit, if of any benefit at all, by upping the dosage. You know, it's obviously lowering your DHT levels enough where you're seeing progress. Most people don't actually see 
incredible results. They may see a, a cessation of hair loss. They may see some thickening of the hair. But you're saying that you got back to where you were before you stopped it originally. That's huge. Yeah. That yeah, is huge. well, I mean, sick, sick wise, um, can I still see my scalp um, when I get out of the shower? Kind of, yeah. But even though I've had a few transplants, but it's definitely a lot, lot better uh, being on the drug. Um, it's, it's just, it just seems like it's thickened up everything. More, um, more isn't again, necessarily like, better with once every. That? More isn't necessarily better with any any type of medication. And I can tell you that the fact that it's working for you, the fact that you're seeing results, that's prop, those are probably the best results you're going to get from the drug, in my estimation. Again, I'm not a doctor. And I think you're only putting yourself at risk by upping the dosage. You're doing well yeah. with it. You're not having any side effects, and it's you're maintaining your hair. I don't know, Joe. What do you think? Oh. Well, you know, I, I started out like like Joe did, um, or like Joe's taking it now. I started out with um, I wasn't taking pro, uh, Propecia; I was taking a, a quarter tablet of Proscar. But I started out taking it Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and after about nine months, um, my hair had improved to where the the crown, the, this large spot that was my crown, it actually narrowed just a little bit, and then the the finer fringe hairs at the bottom of the crown had actually thickened up a bit. It wasn't a dramatic okay. improvement, but it was something that was noticeable to uh, to Dr. Wong at the time. And since then, I have upped my dosage. And, you know, my observations as far as what it's done for me, I think it has, you know, in, in my case, I think it has made my hair stronger overall than it was um, when I was on an every day, every other day dosage. Um, but at the same time, I don't know if it's enough of a difference to, to make it worthwhile. Um, because like your doctor told you, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. And I'm also of the opinion, uh, my non uh, unprofessional, uh, opinion that if you do up your dosage, that you are in, um, a position where you cannot reduce your dosage in the future, um, with any sort of confidence, knowing that it's not going to change. In other words, yeah, that makes if sense. you do up your dosage, don't go back to every other day or do it to a, a lower dosage because you might actually lose ground. And that's just based on observation over, you know, from patients I've known personally over the past 12 years in uh, in a clinical setting. So I would recommend that uh, you you stick where you are, like your doctor said, and think long and hard before you. Uh, decide to move forward with an increase in frequency or dosage. Yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense because um, lately I noticed that I'm getting a little, um, I guess I'm getting a little cocky, and every now and then I'll take one and then I'll take another one the next day, and then I'll just do it again like uh, the next week, you know, and then in between. Just, just remember day, what but... happened last time you changed things. Right. It, 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 right. it went to hell, right? So just stay no, the course, man. You, well, you found yeah, the, you found the formula. Already, Stick so, with so. it. You know, th this is the right. way I, the way that I feel about it is is this, and I think Joe makes a lot of sense. And like you know, it's it's difficult once you're at a, at a certain dosage, it's hard to go back down because all hell, you know. I mean, you can just end up going through a severe telogen effluvium. But yeah. if you if you find that after a while you're not getting the same benefits from taking the dose uh, every other day, then you could up your dosage and give it a shot well, yeah, while it's sense. still working for you. While you're still experiencing the benefits, I just wouldn't mess with it. You know, keep that other pill in your back pocket. You could always use it later. Right, right. And my my point is too is that I really believe there is something with the um, the fillers, like you said earlier, and the in and also the whatever it is, the inactive ingredients that you know why the the name brand works better for me than the generic. I don't know, but I don't care either because. I get my Propecia at Costco, and it's it's cheaper. And, yeah. and I pay about $238 for a three-month supply, which is actually lasting me six months now. That's great, yeah. I've obviously yeah. taking it. And, you know, it's very affordable for me. Um, so I like the peace of mind and its name brand. And um, it's funny because there's a doctor uh, that's on your list. Um, he strongly believes in it every other day, too, instead of every day. It's uh, Dr. Jerry Cooley. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was reading something, an article he wrote a few years ago, and he really, you know, believes strong about every other day. Um, I think he even puts his patients on it to 
to start with just every other day. But yeah, uh, and there's actually yeah, there's, there's several doctors who feel the same way, and there's some guys like 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 Joe. Uh, he started taking it. Uh, what'd you take it three days a week? You said Joe. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't there, even take it on the weekends. Yeah, there are doctors who will prescribe it just three days a week to start, just to make sure that the patient can tolerate the drug well. Right, right. So um, I, I think I think you sound like you're in a much better position than you were when you stopped taking the drug. I find your story awesome. interesting because and it's, it's, it's more common than I think a lot of people realize. You know, you had no side effects. You had success with the drug. You were on, on the drug for a few years. And then based on what you read on the internet, not on the internet, not based on your own experiences, but just based on the fear of reading what other people are, are posting about, you decided to stop the drug. And I think a lot of guys are starting to do that. There's actually a guy who's in the industry. He writes a paper for the industry, and he was on it for like 10 years. And this is a guy who's in the field, and he stopped taking the drug because of that. That's and, amazing. It's amazing. But it's, it's powerful, um, you know? I mean, listen, it's scary when you read this stuff. It's like, you know, why do I want to do this? Why do I want to be on this? But, you know, there are times when, like, I'll read about ingredients that are in, like, you know, moisturizer or, or stuff that I'm putting on my body or shampoo, and you can go onto, onto blogs and websites, and there will be so much insanity about these, you know, common everyday household products causing cancer, causing this, causing that. The truth is we don't know. You know, there doesn't seem to be any causal effect with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Right. So we just don't know right. what the reality is. So anyone can scare the shit out of anybody today. If we, we all have access to the Internet. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, another thing is, too, is, Joe, like you were saying earlier um, about mm -hmm. how your hair was growing in. Mine's growing in the same, same way. It's um, like where they didn't transplant back there. Um, it's growing in the same way it did when I was younger, when I was first on Propecia. Like coming from really? the bottom, uh, uh -huh. coming in like from the bottom up and from the sides in, and he yeah. could see that at my last visit, and he pointed that out to me, and I already could see it before I even went and saw him on my last visit, and he thought it was just, it was great, but like I said, he transplanted my crown last time, and I had probably 1,000, 1,100 grafts, whatever I got, probably isn't a lot for the size of crown that I had, but it looks so much better now with that, the row game in, in the Propecia, that I'll go out now, and if I have my back to people, I mean, yeah, I, I could still probably use a little more back there, but guess what? It looks so much more better than what it did before. I don't even really think of it anymore if somebody's looking at the back of my head. You know, you're, what, you're, what you're talking about, I mean, I, I, can, I can relate to that, and, and it's a fantastic feeling. So, you know, congratulations, I mean, big, big time, not just on uh, getting there before, but getting it back a second time, which is such an amazing comeback. I mean, I, I've I've talked to many guys in your situation where they read something online, and even though they had no issues whatsoever after years of taking it, they kind of flipped out and just said, "Screw it, I'm not taking this. I'm scared," not realizing that uh, you know after so many years, it's not going to happen to them. Again, my unprofessional medical opinion, but. You know, you you went through that, and then you got it back by getting back on the medication, and it's fantastic. And what you said was said earlier about um, kind of being able to see your scalp in the back when you get out of the shower. I, I'm I'm kind of sitting here thinking this must be a hell of a turnaround because no, if well, you can just it, it, barely see your even, scalp, even in the top of my head, like the middle. I yeah. mean, you know. I, I can even see it there, but it's just everywhere around my head is just so much more thicker. You yeah. know, um, it's not just the back; it's the middle, the, the front. Um, it's just been a it's just been a really good turnaround, and it's just something like you know, I, I know I have to stay on it, even though I have transplanted hair. You still lose the hairs around it if you're not on it. Well, yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I actually think it's insane for guys to, to take you know the 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 time, spend the money. The emotional roller coaster that you go through when you have a hair transplant, I think it's insane for them not to do something, not only to protect the transplant, but to, to protect their native hair. Exactly. It just it doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. To me, it's kind of like, okay, I understand why you don't want to take finasteride. That's cool. But don't invest in this transplant. Don't invest your 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 blood, sweat, and tears and just the emotional roller coaster that people go through when they undergo this type of cosmetic surgery. I mean, you have the ugly duckling phase. You don't know if it's going to grow. It's not like getting a nose job or something. I mean, this is a process, and not to protect that. And also, if, 
Let's think about the money. I don't know how much you paid for your right. transplants, but you know, an average transplant today is like fifteen grand. That's on the that's on the right. low end. And you, you know the the the, the thing about um, about what he went through is I, I I usually describe it like this: Why get a tooth replaced and stop brushing your teeth? It's the same difference. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, that's actually really that's a really good uh, 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 analogy. That's the way to great way to describe it because that's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, be- before I hang up, I'm going to make uh, one more. Fi- well, it's just actually a question I have. It's probably more towards you, Joe, since you've worked uh-huh. in clinics and stuff. But Spencer, I'd like your um, opinion too. And I know you guys aren't doctors, but my doctor that did the work on me, who I still see for uh, checkups and stuff. When he does a transplant or when he puts you on Propecia, either or, he strongly believes in not really the 12-month mark. He strongly believes in the 18-month mark. He believes you should give Propecia 18 months or a transplant 18 months. Not a year, but 18. What do you guys feel about that? Do you ever hear that number before, 18 months? I have, but I'll I'll let Joe answer the question. Well, I've heard heard it a lot, and... Um, I got mixed feelings on it, honestly, because you know the growth itself. Um, you should you should be seeing uh, the, the growth between eight and twelve months fully, as far as I'm concerned. Now, to to qualify that uh, further, there is a, a process that hair goes through after it started to grow, and that's what what I call the the maturing phase where. Um, you know, your, your hairs, when they were transplanted and started to grow, were probably, um, maybe, um, kind of kinky or wiry or just had uh, a dull color to them. Um, and then after, after more time went on, they straightened out and softened and maybe got some, some shine. Um, that's what happens with a lot of, a lot of guys. And that can take, um, between 12 and 18 months to kind of finalize itself. Um, I'm not a... I don't subscribe a whole lot to growth occurring at 18 months, um, but I have seen it happen very rarely. Um, I think a lot of times what we're dealing with is a resetting of the, of the growth cycles because when you think about it, when you transplant X number of, of grafts or hairs from the back to the top, you're essentially resetting the growth cycle for all those hairs being moved at the exact same time. And so um, you know they all go into... Um, and, and the telogen t- fall out, and between three to five months later, they start growing back in. So they've all been reset onto a similar time frame uh, cycle. But my, I, I got a theory that after so many months have have uh, passed of growth from all of these new hairs, that some of these new hairs actually go back into their original cycle, and so you'll have a, a telogen phase uh, kick in again. And that's why I think some guys online uh, are saying, "God, my my hair transplant was great at eight months, but here I'm at twelve months, and it looks like it looks like hell." And I think and that actually, might be that's actually a really good point that most people don't really understand. It's really not explained to them by their physicians in most cases, yeah. and you don't see a lot of a lot of that online. I have told yeah. uh, patients, I've told um, you know guys on, on the forum, and I've also told you know guys who've called me through the shows over the years the exact same thing. I don't know why it's not described in any literature. I don't know why that, you know, it's not really talked about by doctors, but there are patients out there who really think that their hair transplants are going to shit after the yeah. nine or 10 month mark. And it gives them a tremendous amount of anxiety. You should write about that, Joe. I think I might have a long time ago. I need to find the article, yeah. but if not, I'll, 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 I'll write about it again because it is, it is something that's rarely talked about, um, certainly not publicly and, and rarely even behind the scenes. But um, I, I think that that's where the 18-month mark can come in as far as the surgery goes um, a hell of a lot more times than just growth in general because I, I, I just don't think that it takes that long for a hair to sprout after it's been transplanted. Now, yeah. As far as the medication goes, I think, I think the medication can even um, go out even longer than 18 months. I, because I agree with that. If I recall, um, the actual improvement curve can last up to 24 months before it plateaus. Yeah, I know a guy that was on it for over two years, and he thought he was getting no results. And then uh, at about two and a half year mark, he and he may have noted it may have been happening at the twenty month twenty four month mark, but he finally realized he's like I haven't gotten any worse, and I think I have more hair. But yeah. he's, he so he stuck with it for over two years, and now he's been on it for probably about ten years. Yeah. 
actually probably longer, maybe 15 years now. So, all right, well, listen, man, Joe, it's, it's great to hear from you. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're back on medication and, and things are going, going well for you. And, you know, I want you to have a happy new year. I'm glad I haven't heard from you in what, six months? I think he hung up. Well, I He's think gone. he did. Oh, well. well, listen, dude, thanks for the call. I'm going to take one more call. I know we're running late. I'll take one more call and then we're going to call it a night. So uh, okay. let's see who this is. Hey, man, you're on the air. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, this is Dave Artisan from the Chicago Lad area. How you doing? <laughs> hey, Dave, what's happening, man? Dave. How are you? Hey, Joe. I'm doing fine. Just Good to hear from you, Dave. Wish everybody a, a, a great new year. A happy new yeah, year happy to new you, year. too, buddy. I think it's going to be a great year. I think it's going to be a great year for the show. I think it's going to be a great year for hair loss. It may not be what a lot of the, the forum guys want it to be, but <laughs> I, I really think that, you know, uh, like I said at the beginning of the show, and I don't know if you heard it, you know, I really think we need to concentrate on the reality of what we have today. The reality of hair loss yeah. and the reality of what we have to treat hair loss. And if you guys, if guys out there can't deal with the reality of, of what the situation is, they need to kind of move on. Right. Just move That's on. That's what live, this show is all about. Right? Live, your, live your life because, you know, listen, I love the traffic. It's great. It's great. You know, it's great for the forum <laughs> to have these guys on there yeah. every day battling it out. But it's not healthy for them. Right. Why hold back on life? You got to move forward, always. But how do you explain that to these young guys? You try to explain that, you know, to them, hair loss is the end of the world, and I get that because it was for me. There's no. That's why I do what I do. I understand that how these guys feel. But sometimes, and I happen, and I, I'm guilty of not reading the forum like I should. But you know, sometimes it actually depresses me to read the forum. That's my own forum. It's depressing to me. And some people can be so, so they can attack so many things. Oh my God. It's all that. emotion. Yeah, it's all emotional, you know. Well, you know what I find interesting? These guys who like attack researchers, the scientists, mm -hmm. the guys that are out there, you know, working to do what they do. And it's like, they don't even understand. It's hard for me to, to think that they can actually understand the process and how science works, and how you know, everyone thinks, okay, we found this possible solution, it should be you know, to market in four years. That's not the way it works. And sadly, right. in most cases, even some of the bigger findings in science, or as far as you know, possible cures for you know, severe diseases, they may never come to fruition, whether it's because right. you know, things just worked in the lab, or whether it's you know, there's you know, certain interests involved that are kind of, you know, there's just not enough money to move forward with, with the work or whatever. You know, a lot of these findings will never come to fruition. People have to understand that. It's frustrating, but you got to live in today. Exactly. Oh, I wanted to talk about the finasteride. Yeah. If you, if you could. Um, I just wanted to give the other side of the coin on, on the use of uh, Dr. Reedy's. Is that what it's, how it's Dr. Pronounced? Reddy, yeah. Reddy's. Reddy's, yeah. As you know, I use Dr. Reddy's. Uh, I've used it for a year and a half now, and I've not had any bad side effects from it. Yeah, listen, you know, so, we, we were saying that a yeah. lot of people have great experience with Dr. Reddy's product. Right, and some don't. It's just like anything else. There's no reason to exactly. expect anything less. I mean, it's you know, it's, it's been around for for quite a while, and a lot of, a lot of guys use it with with uh, you know, great success. It's just, you know, when when it's not the the original, when it's not the name brand, um, you know, you, you got you got questions as to why things may be happening with the Dr. Reddy's brand that you know may or may not be happening with the name brand. But um, you know, if you're taking the the Reddy the Reddy version and it's working fine, then you know, it's fantastic. I mean, no, no reason to switch, no reason That's to be right. concerned with it. And you know, that, that's the way, and I say that all the time. You start with something, if, it's doing, if you're doing well with it, just don't switch it. Make sure you stay on that right, same I, generic. Yeah. Uh, when it comes, to, when it comes to hair loss, if you find something that works, don't change it because it takes a hell of a long time to see the difference. And by the time you see the difference, it's too late. That's right. Yeah. Uh, like for me, I won't switch to Propecia. I you, won't. You shouldn't. The, no. No. It doesn't make any sense to. I've, I've been getting much better de density now 
because of this uh, Dr. Reddy's. And uh, so far, so good. You know, that we're going to get, there's going to be the, the guys out there who are going to listen to the archives of the program, who have listened to the live show. They may go online and say it's like, a, it's like the hair transplant Propecia show. But what else do they want it to be? That's what it is. Well, that, that's what the callers are asking about. Yeah, that's exactly what, you know, the, I mean, I think that we're kind of, you know, uh, guiding the show in direction where we're, we're, you know, people are able to call in now and talk about stuff that's available today. Stuff that's, you know, yes. they want to get help. They're considering doing whatever they're considering doing. The future stuff is great. We can talk about that stuff. And I spoke to you yeah, about right. this, Ortiz, and you, and you too, Joe. It's great. People want to call in to talk about that. That's great. It's, if it's of interest to you, we'll talk about it. But we're going to be dealing with what we have to work with today. I would love to hear some guys calling to talk about, you know, hair systems. We don't talk a lot about right. that. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you know, maybe uh, I'll, I'll put I'll put out the call. Maybe we'll do something on the forum and see if we can speak more about that stuff too. Because listen, out of all of the hair loss treatments out there, um, believe it or not, hair systems are really the most utilized. There's millions upon millions of dollars spent every year in the U.S. on on fake hair. Mm. It's a it's a huge market and. Uh, People don't realize just how how common they are because some of them are so good now you just can't tell. You can't tell. Yeah, it's really advanced, hasn't it? You know, it, it has. I think there's a lot of finesse involved. The person really has to understand how to how to like take care of it and maintain it themselves. I don't believe that you can go to a club. Again, this is just my opinion. And come out. You may come out looking pretty good the first day, but if you kind of depend on that maintenance and that servicing. Uh, you're going to end up looking, in my view, like a guy who's wearing a wig. Mm. Just the way that it is. You know, today you can go online, you can buy relatively inexpensive pieces. You can kind of, they can be like disposable uh, contact lenses. And you can get a new one every month. I know a guy, and you know the same guy, Joe, who basically, that's how he lives his life. And he yep. just does like a disposable hairpiece thing. And it works perfectly fine for him. Yeah. And he, no complaints. This guy, you know, he's banging cocktail waitresses two at a time. Literally. Interesting. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much literally, yeah. 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 So, yeah. all right, man. Well, listen, um, Artista, Dave, have a, a really happy new year. Thank it's you. Always, always good to hear from you. I'm glad you're yeah, doing so year, well. Yeah, happy new year, Dave. Yeah. And uh, I said happy new year to you. Well, Happy New Year to you, too. Good to hear from you. All right, man. You take yeah, care. You, too. All right. All right, guys. Take care. Take it easy. Happy New Year. Bye. All right. Bye. Hey, Joe, it's been a great show. I'm really glad that you joined us. I'm glad we kind of figured out the logistics of, of you calling in. Skype seems yeah. to be working really well. Yeah, I, I agree. It was uh, some some great calls, and it, it was while it was finasteride heavy. Yeah, you know, like I said before, if that's what they're asking about, then that's what we're going to talk about. So it, it's a calling I think it's a good show. Idea to, yeah, it's a call-in show, and I, I think it's a good idea. Put put feelers out for other subjects, but un, until people start asking about different subjects, you know, if an asteroid's what's on their mind, then that's what we'll talk about. That's right. That's right. Well, Joe Tillman, thanks so much. Uh, have a happy new year. You do the same. Thank you very much for having me on. Oh, right. and, um, it's a pleasure, yeah, man. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. All right, you take care. All right, bye-bye. All right, guys, we got to close up shop. I want to wish everybody a happy and healthy new year. Uh, really enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, there's a good chance we'll be live next week. Let's see. Next week is what? The first is on Friday. So I'll probably be live next week. I'll make sure that it's announced on the forums if I am. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions about hair loss, you know, we do have Ball True Talk forums. You can go on there. You can learn a lot. Just always take what's written on the forums with a grain of salt unless you know it's coming from a professional. If it's coming from an anonymous user, you never really know. There's a lot of really good guys, though, on Ball Truth Talk. I think things have changed a lot on the forum. Uh, we've made it quasi-private, um, and um, we, really, we really try to make it a, you know, a safe place. So you, know, you can go on there. You can interact with other hair loss sufferers. You can kind of learn and see what's going on. But like I always say, don't spend too much time on the forums. It's always it's good to go on there, get your information, and get out. Live your life. 
you know, the form is going to be there. That's baldtruthtalk.com. If you are considering surgical hair restoration, of course, you could check out uh, our recommended surgeons at the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. That's IHS.org. Also check out the American Hair Loss Association at AmericanHairLoss.org. I want to wish everybody a very happy and healthy new year. Until next time, be strong, God bless, and thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for any inconvenience you may have been put to prior to the program, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. And if you could now leave by the exits at the rear, that would be splendid. Thank you. Good night.